Welcome to Nimmin Live, the number one place on the internet to learn about YouTube, network with other content creators, and have an awesome time doing it. My name is Nick, and today I'm going to be answering your YouTube questions. And I'm joined today by my brother from the same mother, D. What is going on? I'm back. Have you noticed a trend? That you keep popping up here? I, I'm like Beetlejuice. You say my name three <laughs> times and I pop up. I here. said it once, but hey, here we are. Here yeah, for your you got to be careful when you say his name because he'll just pop up. <laughs> here for your daughter, Chuck. <laughs> what is going on? We're ready to answer your YouTube question today. If you do have a question about YouTube, there is a link down in the description below. First come, first serve. So if you're thinking about asking a question, right now would be the time to do that. And with all of that stuff said, I do want to let you know that today's stream is brought to you by TubeBuddy. TubeBuddy will help you optimize your videos for discovery. TubeBuddy will help you test your thumbnails to make sure that the thumbnails that you're making are effective for the people that you're trying to reach. It gives you reports saying that people from, from like suggested videos responded this way, home pages responded this way, search responded this way, and so on, which can help you, you know, make better decisions when it comes to putting your thumbnails together. In addition to that, they have a total of 90 different tools that'll help you with your YouTube channel. So it's a very common tool for YouTube content creators to use. So if you don't have it yet, you can try it out at TubeBuddy.com slash Nimmin. Um, and you can try it for free, actually. And you can see, you know, all the different things that it can do for you. In addition to that, um, this stream is co-brought to you by StreamYard, which is the live streaming platform that we use to stream this every single Saturday at 9 a.m. Eastern. And the reason that we use StreamYard is because it's super easy. It's really easy to bring on guests when we want to. They do all the hosting for us in the cloud. So if there's a technical problem and the stream goes down, they keep everything open for us it they make it really easy to put graphics on the screen and they record in the background while you're streaming as well so you can have that content to repurpose elsewhere if you want to all kinds of great features inside of StreamYard, but you can try that for yourself as well if you're a live streamer or if you're considering live streaming at streamyard.com and of course i've got a link to that down in the description as well as i reached out to this tube buddy sign as mm -hmm. i often do with the wind up yeah i realized that we should put fur on the i want to pet this for some reason okay i've yeah, got this fur urge. in that corner I want to put fur across the whole top, like a, <laughs> right? Technically, tea in the house. How's it going, man? We can, put, we can put we can put fur and put some like chains going across there, and oh. some of those little balls hanging from like the top of the, uh, like, the cut in there, like Cheech and, <laughs> like Cheech and Chong's. Right, like we're when like we're it? like we're, we've got like a low rider uh, live stream there set. There we go. Yeah, that'd be I good. Just, I'm that'd just be here good. for the fur. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so I uh, hope everybody's doing fantastic. So if you are just joining us um, today, we are answering YouTube questions. So how this works is this is 100% free um, for you. You know, uh, thank you to our sponsors. And um, how this works is you just simply put your question in the form that's down in the description um, of this video right now. And I answer them in the order that they are received. If you are participating in this live stream right now, if you get your question down there, it'll get answered on the stream today because we don't have a lot, of, um, a lot of questions in there right now. So if you can get it down there, um, it'll go ahead and get uh, answered on the stream here today so i'm super excited to get into it so i'm just going to go ahead and get into it d are you ready get right into it i okay. brought i brought almonds today okay good I brought some good. little uh, miniature uh little pocket size energy right here all right good good yeah. good 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 so, go. ready so, to go man. so our very first question hey what's up with bigard nice to see you in here hey, Chantel. Hey, nice to see you here as well doug Houston, yt what's up man technically t nice to see you in here my man brad magic flying potato hope that you are doing fantastic looking forward to seeing you here in a few months Super um tight. little crafty nook nice to see you in here as well hope everybody's doing fantastic the very first question that we have today is from the creator classroom the creator uh classroom says that i just want to thank you so much for the review yesterday i've taken so many actions already my question that might help others as well is how many videos should go into a playlist in part two how many playlists should go on the home page so uh this is a really good question if you want to record this one d if you want to hit that record button you got to turn the audio on too so you got to hit the mic over uh on this side you got to turn the uh mic right or the far top uh, left from your view yep that's it yep should be it okay i think we're good i think Fingers we're recording crossed. here we go <laughs> When it comes to the amount of playlists that you put on your YouTube videos, here's some things that you want to, no. when it comes to the amount of playlists that you, when it comes to the amount of videos that you're using in your playlist on YouTube, here's some things that you want to think about. The very first is how long your videos are and how far you think somebody would get into a playlist. In addition to that, you also want to think of the purpose of that playlist. So for example, in some cases, people will take their content and they will just put all of a certain type of content into a playlist. They'll also create very specific playlists that they only use when they're recommending 
pinning that playlist in a pinned comment or maybe in a community feed post. And the reason for that is because if you recommend a playlist in a community feed post or in your pinned comment and people go to that, you want them to get as far into that playlist as possible. So because of that, if you make videos that are, let's say, 20 minutes long, then in that case, you'd probably only want to put like, you know, two or three videos in there. If you make videos that are five minutes long, maybe you do three videos, maybe four videos, something like that. But the idea is to just think about, okay, for the people that are coming into this playlist, what makes the most sense for them when they are going into it in terms of them getting the content that they need or they want and getting as far into that playlist as possible based on the time limit of the videos that you have. Um, in addition to that, when it comes to your homepage, you want to fill it up. And the reason that you wanna fill it up with playlists, and when you add them to your homepage, it's actually called a section, but the reason that you want to fill up your homepage with the playlist is because every YouTube channel, you have you know, your main niche that you operate in, but within that, you also have like subsections of what it is that you're doing. So if you're an entertainment channel, then maybe some of your content is pranks, maybe some of your content is something else. So then each of those might get a playlist, and that particular playlist would be made for the purpose of putting it on your YouTube channel page. So then because of that, maybe you would manually sort that to ensure that the right the right videos are in the right places on your home page so as people are coming down your channel page they are seeing exactly what it is that you want them to see but since you have your entire channel page filled up with all of these playlists what that's going to do is it's gonna make it super easy for people to find more of the content that they come to your channel for. And since you are breaking it down in that categorical manner, you just wanna think about all of the different things that people come to your YouTube channel for and just make sure they can easily find that content and go into that playlist and watch as many of those videos as possible. Wow. Yeah. You said that all in one breath. So listen, we have a couple of super chats in here, and I just right. want to address the first one. You also have a new channel member. Okay. So uh, living in Omaha, uh, David Matthews David, says- what's up, man? D, you inspired me, as I often do, thank you. Uh, D, you inspired me to sign up for YouTube pr Premium. Thank you, it changed my life. Nice. Again, nice. Uh, we're not paid to say this, yeah, but, not if, at all. but if you're gonna pay for something and you're using YouTube, YouTube Premium gets rid of all of the ads and yeah. it's totally worth it. Now, I'm gonna yeah. change your life again. Uh-oh. I'm gonna go, I'm uh -oh. gonna go. Uh-oh, get ready. I'm gonna, I'm gonna double down here. I'm getting nervous. Yeah. Buy yourself, and again, not sponsored, buy a oh. Logitech MX Master. Yeah, got, I, yeah that's what I got a here, A Logitech yeah. MX Master mouse. Yeah. This is the best mouse you're ever going to use. Yeah. Not I, sponsored. Not sponsored, but a Logitech, call me. Best <laughs> mouse you're ever going to use, the MX Master Series yep. mouse. It is absolutely incredible. So I'm going to hit another Super Chat. All right. Super so the uh, next one that we have here is Adventures with Time. says, just thanking you guys for answering my questions past and forward. Um, you give me incentive to not sleep on Saturday mornings. Fantastic, but hey, man, get your rest. <laughs> love it. Love right, it. You want to you make sure you get rest. And, and uh, really quick, Draco Marine Services, welcome, welcome to, the to the Niminati. So um, what you want to do is, and I still actually have to redirect that. So I'm just going to drop the link um, right here um, directly. And what you want to do is, if you are interested in being a part of the Facebook group as well, um, make sure you go to this link. And this is only for channel members. Um, make sure you go to this link, put in your YouTube, uh, you know, basically fill out all the information on the way in, and that's how I confirm you're a member. Um, if you can do that before the stream is complete, then, um, then I can get you in there before the stream is over today, or, or right after the stream is over, one of those two. So, um, so make sure you do that, and welcome to the uh, Niminati. Paul Dixon confirms. He says, I've been using that mouse for years. Yeah, I agree great. 100%. Yeah, like the, yeah. the little like yeah. the little shortcut buttons and stuff. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah, so you can, and it feels good in your hand, too. They also make a keyboard. Yeah. Oh, they, I didn't know they, that. They, know. they make an MX keyboard. They make a mini. And if you have multiple computers, you can actually – so you can switch things back and forth with the, with the mouse or the keyboard. So, like, I've got it set up at home to where I've got my it's, – it's like the keyboard is running the, the computer – but with one click of the button, it actually clicks over to my iPad. And now I can oh. type on my iPad. Nice. Man, it is, yeah. Nice, that's cool. Go watch That's tech. super cool. Yeah, Holly. go, go, go. Holler. Call yeah. Me. Call me, call me, call me. Call me. Call me. Call me. <laughs> <laughs> so next up on the list, we've got uh, K Skis. K Skis says that they've been on YouTube for a year or more. They upload when they have time. Um, it's a gaming channel. The goal of the channel is to reach 100 subscribers. And the question is, morning, Nick uh, and D. So recently I've been uh, doing a, a lot of solo content and I'm not seeing the amount of views and I'm not reaching any new subscribers. But a few years ago, um, I used to do group content a lot and that caused me to blow up. So my question is, should I do more content with others so that I could keep growing my channel? If yes, um, how 
also to reach out to other creators in my position to do collabs. So here's the thing is um, everything on YouTube right now doesn't work the same as it worked in the past. Um, so the the core fundamental thing in terms of like, you know, adding value to people, you know, uploading on a regular basis, you know, those types of things, um, making sure that you understand your audience and that you're serving the, that particular audience with the content that you're publishing, all those things, those work, those always work everywhere. But when it comes to, um, you know, if you're doing it with a group, is it going to make a difference? It could, but keep in mind that, you know, people will respond to that group, you know, differently than they'll respond, uh, you know, to you personally, and it could be better or it could be worse. So, you know, I would definitely reach out to some other gamers if that's something that you're interested in doing. Like, it sounds like you're like wanting to do that. So if you are, then in that case, I would just reach out to other gamers. You can hop on Reddit. You can hop into probably some Facebook groups. You're probably going to have to filter through some. So because of that, one thing that you might want to do is put together some type of forum or something something like that that you can send people to to kind of like apply to, you know, to, to, to game together. Or you can just be open and be like, hey, you know, anybody that wants to come game, um, you can, you know, you can come and, and participate, you know, during the stream, your call. Um, but just putting that word out and letting people know that you are open to do that um, and putting that word out on places like Reddit and Facebook and, you know, any communities that you're in um, is something, you know, that will, of course, get you in front of those people that be willing to uh, collaborate. All right. Next question. Um, next up, we've got Las Curry, LAS Curry. Um, they say that, uh, let's see here, they create tutorials, gear reviews, and growth advice for gamers who want and start to grow, uh, want to start and grow a live stream. The goal of the channel is to help gamers turn their passion into something worthwhile that can support their life and family. And the question is, I serve beginners, I have a playlist that's a little more immediate to advanced, lowest performing videos on the channel. Um, should I just unlist those 11 videos with the total 4,000 views in 90 days so YouTube can recommend related content? And not these the goal um, is to possibly list these videos off platform for a deeper audience so um, in terms of the playlist uh, you know some of the content being for intermediate and advanced as long as you're still targeting the same you know like group of people it's fine so like if you look at my channel i serve content creators so because of that i have videos on my channel about doing stuff on your phone i've got videos on my channel about you know different live streaming stuff i've got videos on my channel about specifically you know things that you need to do to grow your youtube channel and things like that and it all works and it all works together because it's still serving you know the same people so ultimately those videos where somebody's learning how to live stream or learning how to do something on their phone um, those will still ultimately end up getting people to get my YouTube tips content recommended to them um, so that they can, you know, keep coming back in for that stuff. Or they can just look at the channel as a resource for, you know, the other, you know, tools and things like that that are involved that, uh, you know, if they come in from that type of content. So because of that. Um, I wouldn't worry too much um, about, you know, just having a handful of advanced videos or intermediate videos if you're serving beginners. Just make sure all of the new content is serving Breathe. is serving beginners out. get it out and another thing too is like you know even if you have um intermediate and advanced content you have a lot of people coming in from that um even though it's you know live streaming based there's still a lot of value that can come out of content made for beginners too, even if you have experience, right? Yeah. So, you know, because of that, you know, I would just leave, I, if it was mine, um, I would leave those up on the channel. You know, I just noticed the front camera is just a tad bit crooked. Okay, okay. Just, so be it. So yeah, be that's it. How we're, that's how we're going today. Yeah, that's how we're rolling today. A little yep. bit crooked. Not a crooked. Yeah, a little bit crooked. So um, let's see here. So the next, uh, the next question that we have here on our list is from Fat Ride. Fat Ride says they do fat biking. Um, the goal is of the channel is to build a community, get better at biking, and or sorry, get better and better at making enjoyable videos. Question one: Copyright. If I screenshot an image off of Google Search and use it as a pop up in my video, would that be infringing? Absolutely. D. Confirm. Yeah. Here's the thing: It's technically infringing what it comes down to is will it be found right. so the answer is if probably not but if it is you could in theory get a claim or a strike right anything that you do not have a license to own anything that you do not have a license to own and you're not using it uh, in regards to fair use you could receive a copyright claim or a copyright strike so the uh, next part of your question says, I'm looking for a coach to just look over my channel to see if I'm on the right track. There's so many coaches out there. How do I pick one? I watch a zillion YouTube how to, but I'm new to it and I have a full time job and I don't mind putting in the hours, um, but I just don't want to burn time. So the very first thing that I would recommend is actually reaching out to somebody that you resonate with, like their teaching style and things like that. Like when they talk to you and it makes sense, um, you know, those are people that you would want to reach out to. Um, in addition to that, you know, some people have, you know, like communities and things like that where you can go in and they'll just like look at your 
your channel anyway. Um, there's also free resources. I know, um, you know, like yesterday, for example, I did like a two hour stream on the Tube Spanner YouTube channel um, where all I did was look at channels and give you know tips on things they can do better uh, my brother right here d and um daniel batal they my do a stream brother right here. how many brothers do you really have <laughs> all right well we my got dan. brother yeah yeah we got dan yeah well yeah. he's over there yeah so <laughs> so uh uh, you know, they do a stream on the StreamYard channel where they look at channels. I know vidIQ has a, uh, a channel review stream that they do on a regular basis as well. So you have, you know, like all these different places where, you know, you can have people look at your channel, you know, for free and give you some advice. But here's the thing is when, when we look at your channel from the outside, we can give you tips on like best practices and things like that. Um, like, hey, you know, your thumbnails are way too crazy or, you know, they're too, um, they kind of cheapen your content or they are this, that, or the other thing. But in order for somebody to add the most value to you, they're going to need to get into your YouTube analytics. And the reason for that is because from the outside, you can use your experience to say like, okay, this is probably not working that well. Um, and when you get stats access, then you can actually prove it and you can explain to somebody, hey, this is why, you know, these videos aren't performing well, instead of looking at it and just adding, you know, experience to it. So um, because of that, you can get more factual um, feedback when people have stats access to your content. So um, because of that, I just recommend that, you know, anybody that you reach out to, if they don't ask for analytics access, um, then in that case, I would find somebody else to, uh, you know, somebody else to talk to. New channel member. Uh, Southwest Barrels, welcome, welcome to the Nimenati. So the Nimenati. Uh, when you get the chance, um, go to this link that I'm dropping right here in the chat. And um, when you go there, make sure you fill out all of the information on the way in, because that's how we verify that you are a channel member on the way in. Um, so if you can do that for the streams over today, then I can get you in there um, as soon as the stream is complete today. Do you have to step away for like uh, 30 seconds? Will you uh, cover this for I a will. second? And can you hit that? I think we're Absolutely. having focus problems too in the front of that uh, front camera there. Okay. You want to yep. hit that? Maybe, I will. Maybe I put that will. on me. Yep. So I'll be, uh, while he's off uh, and handling this, I'm going to tackle some Left questions. Right. No, 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 no. It, the focus is going on. So you think there's like something tapped? Yeah, 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 yeah. I think something's off on that. So a little technical uh, difficulty here that we're handling. So we're, I'm gonna tackle some questions out of the chat while he's doing what he's gotta do real quick and trying to fix the camera. So if you do have a question, you don't have to put it in the form because they don't have access to the form. Just go ahead and ask it here uh, in the chat. And I'm gonna back up for a second because the person that was talking about taking an image out of Google, can you have a copyright issue for that? Well, the answer is yes. Uh, technically, you're probably, I mean, technically, yes, you could have a problem, but it's unlikely that you're going to have a problem, especially if it's just a little pop up, but it's just to understand the risks going in. That said, there are plenty of free resources out there like pexels.com. You can also get Adobe stock and some other websites where they have a ton of free images that you can use. Adobe stock, not free. Adobe stock is not free. Adobe stock is not free. Pexels uh, is free. And I'm sure you guys probably can list off a handful of those. Uh, in the chat as well. And for people asking for a channel review today, we're not doing channel reviews here. That's not what we do. As Nick was explaining, uh, there are other times to do that, uh, like on the Tube Spanner channel. Uh, there are other uh, channels that do that as well. Yeah, like when it comes to the images that you're using, um, like, like uh, there is, if you go to Google and you sort by, um, if you go into the advanced tools on Google, yeah, um, you can sort by license. We're still having focus. Issues. Is it really? Yeah, yeah, it's like. It's yeah, I'm not sure, because uh, I, I hit the thing on the back to, to take away right. the thing. So when it comes to um, uh, Google Images, um, you can sort by license, but the thing with that and using Pexels and like all those things is like, you're probably gonna be fine. Um, but the problem is, is like, you know, like I could take a, I could take an image right now, I could buy it from like Adobe Stock, and then I could put it up on my website. Well, if somebody searches for an image like that, it's possible that it could come up under the image tab um, from there, even though I made the purchase and I have the rights to use it. If you were to screenshot it and you didn't actually have a license, if they do come after you and you can't defend it by showing them that you have the license, then in that particular case, you know, it can end you up in a, in a situation. But keep in mind when it comes to YouTube, everything that you show in your videos, everything that you use in your content, even the fonts that you use for your thumbnails, a lot of that stuff is even copyright protected. You can get copyright strikes on your video content. You can also get copyright strikes on your thumbnails as well. So you gotta be really careful with this stuff. Like there's laws around copyright for a reason. So because of that, you don't want to, you know, test the waters or anything like that. You just want to go straight to like, okay, I need to make sure that I have the full rights to, to use this stuff. Yep. Super chat. 
Kelly Copter Super says, long time subscriber here. I'm a YouTube uh, video editor, but started YouTube and I love being able to share my um, edutainment. Um, your tips have helped me loads. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. I'm glad that you are enjoying the uh, content and thank you for the super chat um, as well. I'm actually going to open your channel up here and just kind of look and see what it is that you have here for, uh, for later. There we go. Drop that in there. Boom. All right. So um, next question that we have here on our list, let me scroll down, is we've got a uh, geology dude. What's going on, geology dude? Hope you're doing great. Been on YouTube for a year or more. They do rock identification and geology education. The goal of the channel is education, influence, and eventually some money. And the question is, if I translate my channel into a foreign language, should I include the original English name too? Perhaps in parentheses as a hashtag. Um, note, I know I must be careful with translations, for example, in Vietnam, Vietnam, blah, Vietnamese, the uh, direct translation of geology man or rock man is slang there for a type of dealer, <laughs> not my audience. Okay, yeah, get that. Yeah, so um, um, when it comes to translating your content, um, I would just translate everything except for the channel name because like, for example, if my name, you know, if, if, if you were to you know, meet me in Vietnam and, you know, you were to, you know, like meet me and I was hanging out with a Vietnamese person, then they would introduce me as Nick, right? So since you have that channel name or even like Coca-Cola, you know, as an example, when you have your brand name, um, then that particular case, you definitely want to, uh, you know, like just use your, use your channel name, um, put that part in English and then translate, uh, translate everything else that you're doing. Yeah. So this is a great question. Uh, man, we keep going backwards on this one. So where did it go? Um, Hushar Kamari, I apologize if I didn't get your name correctly. Um, Hush Hushar says, isn't a Google image used in a video with some commentary? Doesn't it make it fair use? Here's the thing about fair use. While when you are disputing a claim, there is a section in there now where you can say that you believe it's fair use, but YouTube cannot actually determine what is fair use. So if the owner of an image, of a song, of a video, or whatever it is that you're using, uh, puts a claim against your your video, right, or your thumbnail, and you say, hey, this is fair use, YouTube cannot determine by law if that's fair use or not. All they can do is send that information back to the claimant, the person who's making the claim, and say, you are claiming that it's fair use, then the owner, the claimant, can say, oh yeah, I can see how it might be, or they can say, no, it's not. And then at that point, uh, you've got a whole mess to deal with. Yeah, and same thing. Like, if you take the original image and you change it and you crop it, yeah, you can still get the copyright problems with that. Yeah. Like, it's not like a video. Like, when you do a video, then you can actually, you know, transform it in a way to make it something that's completely unique. But when you're cropping an image, it doesn't make it still the unique image. You're still using that image as, like, the, the source material, right? Yeah. So because of that, you know, it still puts you in, the, in a uh, similar situation. Bottom line is this. If you're using anything at any time, you do not have permission or a license to use or it's not yours you do run some risk of receiving a copyright claim or a copyright strike it could be a very tiny risk or it could be something that happens five years from now but you do run a tiny risk right that's what licensing is for that's mm -hmm. what permission is for iPhone Chris, thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. Super um, really quick, I want to answer this question here. It says, um, what's the best place to get a thousand members added to your channel? How do you um, how do you get to one thousand views quickly as a totally blind Christian YouTuber? So here's the thing: when it comes to um, when it comes to YouTube, you have to do that on platform. Like you cannot. I mean, technically, you can buy those things, but if YouTube finds out that you're buying those, th there's two problems with this. One, if YouTube finds out, you'll lose your channel. Um, two is when you make those purchases, they're actually bots, so they're not even like real people that are in interacting with your content. So you get those numbers, but they don't mean anything. So when you go and you apply for the YouTube partner program, if that's the reason that you're trying to get those, if you go and you apply to the YouTube partner program, they're going to see that you have, you know, a bunch of, you know, basically bot accounts on your channel and they're not going to let you into the partner program. So you don't want to do that. The way that you actually do it is by providing value to people on YouTube in some way. Um, and you know, actually growing your channel organically. Um, you know, there's not, you know, fortunately and unfortunately <laughs> there's not, there's not a way to shortcut the process yeah. of learning how to grow on these social platforms organically. Um, so because of that, you just want to make sure that you're going through the process of learning how YouTube works, of learning how, um, of learning who it is that you are the most that you possibly can about the people that you're trying to reach with your content and 
and making a, the best content that you can possibly make for those people. Because if you're not, if you if you don't do it organically, um, then then you literally have a, 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 a robots that are you know subscribed to your YouTube channel and they won't respond. And then when you publish your videos, YouTube might recommend it to some of those bot accounts um, before you get reviewed. They're going to recommend it to some of those bot accounts, and they obviously can't respond to your content. And because of that, you know you're you're going to lose. So um, so definitely do do not um, do not do that. Yeah, and by by doing all of this organically, and it's a violation of, of of the YouTube terms of service too. Like you will yeah. lose your account as soon as it's detected. Yeah, and, and by doing this organically, right, doing it the hard way in the trenches, like everyone else, yep. video after video, trying to make videos that reach a specific target audience. By doing this, you're also giving lots of information to YouTube about what your video is about, and then YouTube gets a better understanding of who your audience is. So when you do start to upload content, YouTube might be able to pull your videos to those audience based on their interest. And if they say, hey, this particular type of uh, viewer is interested in your particular type of content because they've correctly identified your content, that's a better match. But if you're buying views, you're buying subscribers, those people are not interested and you're right. actually going to confuse YouTube. Right. And they might, they might get your content in front of the wrong people who don't click which hurts your click-through rate, so on and so forth. Even if you take the path where you pay for advertising to get views, because you're like, hey, you know what? YouTube has this promotion tab, so I'm gonna use that and I'm going to pay you know, however much it costs to get me these subscribers. If you still get, can't get people to respond organically like Dee was saying, then you're just like, like there's you just wasted a bunch of money because those people, you know, as they subscribe to your YouTube channel, if you can't get them to respond when YouTube recommends your videos to them, then there's no reason to have them there in the first place as well. Yeah. It, look, it sucks. We all, everybody has to go through it. Yep. You got to get in the trenches, get down on your elbows. <laughs> you yep. got to crawl right. in with the rest. Yeah. You got to learn. Crawl man. in the you mud got, with everybody else. You got to crawl yep. in the mud with everybody yep. else. You got to get dirty. You got to learn the skills and it's slow and it's painful and sometimes it's demoralizing, yep. but it's just something you have to learn how to do. Yep. Um, Cha Cha King, thank you for the super chat, says, I appreciate both of you. I do have a question. I've been responding personally to every comment. As the channel grows, it's getting harder to do that. Oh, yeah. How and when do you transition away from that? Oh, so, oh, this um, is a great so question. It is. So YouTube, almost, almost, there we go. <laughs> If you're getting overwhelmed by comments on your YouTube channel, here's some things that you want to think about. First is that YouTube has the heart option. Um, so with that, you don't have to leave an actual reply, but when you hit that heart icon, it lets people know that you saw their comment. Of course, a reply, you know, is better in terms of, you know, if they even see the notification that you replied, but that heart option on there is so that you can just go through and you can acknowledge the, um, the comments that are left. So of course, um, when people leave longer comments, it makes sense to kind of prioritize those because they put in that extra effort, you know, to, to leave you an actual comment instead of just saying something like, hey, good video or something like that. So um, so the best practice there is if it's just like a, a really easy comment, like, hey, good video or hey, this is so entertaining, or whatever the thing is, just a quick heart for those. And then when people have an actual conversational comment, then hop in and answer those. And that's like step one about lessening that load. Step two is as you are progressing through your journey on YouTube, when it starts getting so overwhelming, that you're like, hey, you know, like I, I can spend all day in here answering my comments. Then in that case, what a lot of content creators do is they'll have people that will help them with their comments as well. So they'll have access to their YouTube channel and they will be able to go in there and answer comments on that person's behalf also. And by doing that, it, it makes it to where the content creator can do some of it and the person can do some of it. Or it can also be to where the content creator just, you know, has somebody else do it all the time and like they don't interact with their comments in any way, shape or form. Some content creators do that. That's up to you to decide, you know, the path that you want to walk there. Um, but that's typically solution, the solution that people use when it comes to the comments. Yeah, everyone in here is going to get to a point eventually where you risk losing control of your comments. Yeah, I, I forget. I, I want to say around 50,000 subscribers, but I think subscribers is even not the right metric, metric to use. Yeah. It's, amount, it's the over amount of comments that you're getting. Yeah, so I, I, I think it was around when I was getting, because YouTube will send you those emails, right? I was getting around 12,000 to 15,000 comments per month. Mm. And I think it was around that range where I was like, yeah, I just can't, I can't do this. Yeah. You know, and I, and I found myself I've got a video of you. 
Uh, I think we were going to Australia. Was I drinking? No, heavily. We, we were going I can't to answer any more no, comments. We were, we were going to Australia, so yeah. we were we were in the cab here on the way to the airport. You're answering comments. We were hanging out at the airport here in Chiang Mai. You're answering comments really? there. We were on that. We were on the airplane. You didn't do it there. We landed. Once we got off the plane, you're sitting at the bus stop where we're waiting for Beanie to come get us. You're sitting at the bus stop answering comments. <laughs> we were in the car. You're answering comments. Yeah, like yeah. Um, it can definitely I, become you know a uh, you know uh, a, a, a thing that 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 requires a lot of attention. Yeah. It, yeah, and I, I had to make the decision of like, look, I appreciate every single person who takes the time to leave a comment. I mean, I mm -hmm. really appreciate that because I, I know how difficult it is to get a comment. Right. So I appreciate everyone. But at the same time, there comes a point where like, you know what? I just like you said, you know, I should have been more engaged with what was happening around me at the time, hanging out with you, hanging out with Beanie. Uh, you know, we were traveling. I was answering comments. Right. So don't ever say I didn't put in the work. Right. I put in the work. Right, right. But now... But and there's also the other side, too, to where, you know, like, if you're spending, you know, three hours a day answering comments, then that's actually, like, taking away from the value that you can add. Because there, if you have, you know, that same three hours, then you can make... You can use that to make more content. Yeah. And then by doing that, you can add value to everybody. Yeah. So, yeah. So what I do now is I, I heart the ones that I can, and I get to them when I can. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm the most active. So if I publish a video... I'll be the most active in those comments for like maybe two or three hours. Then after that, I just go back when I can and just give a heart to some and I'll answer a couple of questions. That, that's all I can do. Next up, we got Adventures with Time. Adventures with Time says um, the type of channel is watch reviews and other watch content. The goal Love of the channel it. is to educate and make some side money. And the question is, I heard you mention remixes on your channel review live stream. Can you explain what a remix is and how other people might remix my videos and should slash can I prevent it? Yes, remix. you can prevent it. So if... If in the upload process um, or after it's uploaded, you can actually go into the settings for that video and you can turn off the ability for people to remix. So it's on the video details page. If you scroll down that page um, and you access this in your YouTube Creator Studio, if you scroll down that video details page, you're gonna see a little box down there that um, gives people to permission to remix the content. If you uncheck that, then they won't be able to. If, they, if, you, if you have people that have already remixed your content and you uncheck that box, all of those videos are going to be taken down um, on those other channels that, that remix the content as well. So just keep that in mind. Um, but basically with the remix, all it is is like if I'm watching one of these shorts and I'm like, hey, I want to, you know, put like a green screen type thing on this where I'm sitting here and then I'm just kind of showing this thing or maybe pausing it from time to time, give my feedback on it. Um, then that allows me to be able to do that. And it's a feature that you can see when you're watching a YouTube short um, or a video to where you can actually select that option to uh, to remix it. So basically it's where people are using your content is kind of like a base to make additional content um, for themselves. So a uh, win with this is that it is also distributing you, right? So when people remix your content, it's yeah. also getting your content in front of, you know, five more people, a hundred more people, a thousand more people, depending on how well their short does. It could be, you know, hundreds of thousands more people that it got you in front of because somebody, you know, that was watching and enjoying your content decided to remix your videos. My advice to that, because I've had a lot of people contact me and say, I don't want people remixing my content. Mm -hmm. I worked really hard to make it. Just like he said, it is free advertising. It's, it's free yeah. advertising yeah. for you. I, I would say this, unless you're in a situation, and I know this happens too, because I had somebody where people talk are about attacking this. you. Right. If, yeah. if people are using it to abuse you in any way, I would disable them. But if they're not abusing you and they're just sharing it, it's social media, right? Like let them share it. That's what it's for. That links back to your channel. Mm -hmm. And in the event, somebody with a larger channel remixes that you can end up getting a lot of views that way. Right. Or somebody makes a remix that ends up blowing up. You could get a lot of views that way. It all links back to your channel. Yep. So think long and hard about why you want to disable that. But if it's for abuse, kill it. Get rid of it. And uh, iPhone Chris says, do you remix your own video? Um, technically, you can uh, if you wanted to. So technically, you can make a short, you know, of your short while you're, you know, talking about something. If you wanted to add additional context or, you know, something like that, you can absolutely do that. Right. But you have to leave remix on. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Mystical Sleep says, it sounds like, hey, I'm in. I'm, well, I like, yeah, you, you had me at Mystical Sleep. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm in. Whatever yeah. that is. Mystical Sleep. Yeah. <laughs> Could have used some of that last night. <laughs> know, right? So uh, the type of channel, it's a sleep story and meditation channel. You yep. had me. Yep. And the uh, goal of the channel is to help people escape from the chaos of their lives and get a better night's sleep. Right. I'm in. All uh, here, in. Like, hey, I, yeah, where, where do I find this? Let I'm me in. say this. <laughs> I, we're going to struggle tonight, tonight mm -hmm. to find a better channel name 
the, the mystical, mystical sleep. sleep. Yeah, I agree. You win the internet for the next month. Yeah. <laughs> I, if I had my play button, I'd give it to you. <laughs> it says um, also to hopefully turn this into a real business as part of the goals as well. The question says, um, I started out with some good views and momentum, but lately I find myself spending a lot of time making videos and being demoralized because people aren't watching them. Views are the lowest they've been and I'm losing motivation. Not sure what changed or what I'm doing wrong. I've been using TubeBuddy's keyword and SEO optimizer, but when I choose one of the higher scoring keywords, it doesn't seem to help me get views. Should I give up or start a different channel? Um, really appreciate all that you guys do. Thanks. Okay. So when it comes to using tools like TubeBuddy, um, the thing, there's actually two things to think about. One, you got to make sure that you're using the tool correctly because yeah. a lot of times people will put in like entire titles into there when it, the keyword explorer is actually made for just keywords. So you need to put a keyword or a keyword phrase in there, not an entire title. So that's step one. Um, if you're already doing that and you're using it correctly, the next part is even if your videos are optimized perfectly, if everything about your video is perfect in terms of, you know, like I've got all the right words here and all the right words down here, um, I'm saying the right things in the video, like I'm doing all of those things. If people don't respond to your videos in terms of clicking on them, you know, watching them, having a good experience and they're watching the videos, continuing on to watch more videos, having, you know, additional engagement with your video, those types of things, then no amount of optimization is going to save that video if the viewers are not, you know, responding to the content. So because of that, when you're optimizing, you know, your videos, you always want to make sure that you're thinking about that and that you're thinking like, okay, this tool isn't like a magic button. It's a tool. And since it's a tool, just like, you know, if you have a hammer and a nail, nail like the uh actually this is probably a bad reference because a hammer will drive that nail into the wood <laughs> so let's just do it this way so the so the tool <laughs> so the uh the the, the tool and is like i'm out of here that's it that's enough for me today you can tell which one of us actually worked with our hands and which one is <laughs> yeah i know and which like, one is never blistered yeah, i don't think I, I don't even think i have a callus on these like baby hands right here yeah, yeah they're I great yeah i smashed every yeah. finger i almost said every finger i own every finger i have and a couple fingers i, I own. Yeah, you're. I've smashed it, them all. You, you look like you have AI fingers. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. It looks like Mid Journey made my hands. Right. <laughs> that's what my hands. Are. <laughs> if you look at my hands up close, it looks like Mid Journey made them all. Oh, love those, it. those are Mid Journey fingers. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, they are. So, uh, but but when it comes to uh, using the tools, though, you know, like the tool is a tool, so it, it helps you, you know, make sure that you're optimizing properly. But at the end of the day, you know, viewers still have to respond to what it is that you're doing. So what you need to do now is you need to go in and you need to see exactly how I'm still cracking up on that. You need to <laughs> you need to go in and see exactly how people are responding to your content. Um, I actually put out a video um, that is about 18 minutes long. And I know it's a long video, but I encourage you to watch that video because that video specifically talks about the problem that you're having. And it talks about like the things that you need to focus on in order to, you know, get the ball rolling a little bit better. Because a lot of times content creators will put out content, but they won't be like, paying attention to the analytics or your stats for your videos. And when they're not paying attention, it will put them in a situation to where they're continuing to do the same thing without noticing that, you know, people aren't responding well. And the problem isn't that, you know, that you're not optimizing correctly. The problem is just when people are getting presented the content, the viewers of YouTube, they're not responding well. One of the things that you're always going to hear people talk about is always think about when you're making your videos that you are making videos for human beings, not for the YouTube robot, right? So when you're putting your content together, the optimization definitely helps, but you need to have people responding well to your videos in order for the whole thing to come together, right? So um, so when it comes to that, I would not start a new YouTube channel, you know, in order to fix the problem because you're going to run, run into the same situation. What you need to do is you need to actually go in and see exactly how people are responding to your content using your analytics. Um, and then from there, then that's going to give you a lot of insight in terms of, you know, things that you need to do to um, improve things to, you know, in increase the response that you're getting from your videos. But again, check out that video. Um, I'm getting a lot of really good feedback from that. A lot of really insightful stuff. One person said that uh, they're like, oh, yeah, here's another video where they said when they first came in, they're like, oh, yeah, here's another video. He's going to be saying, you know, the same thing, whatever. But um, but uh, but really appreciate rated. You know, I gave tons of examples, showed tons of screenshots. So I show you exactly where to look, exactly what to do. Um, so go and watch that video when you uh, when you have the time. That's what I feel like whenever my phone is like ringing and I look down and I see it's you. I'm just kind of like, oh, okay, yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. Here he goes again. Like, uh, here's here's Nick again. What's he gonna do? Yeah, <laughs> Renee Ritchie in the house. Hey, YouTube's what's up, creator liaison. Most Renee says the most common reasons for view decline I see involve loss of competitiveness, 
packaging video experience, stale formats, and not paying attention to audience movement. Boom. Love there it. we go. Hope you're doing well, Renee. Next up, we got Cajun Roots Reseller. Um, Cajun Roots Reseller says they um, type of channels to help others with reselling and uh, Q&A morning shows. And the goal of the channel is sharing information with others to help them grow in the reselling business. And the question is, I would like to know what you think about the beta promotions for YouTube advertising. Will that hurt or help our channel? I'm not sure. Um, so I see that feature, you know, as well that is available to, you know, I think all of us now, I'm not sure. Um, but when it comes to that, it's essentially advertising for your YouTube channel. So just like using Google ads for your YouTube videos, the most important part to think about before you use something like that is can I get an organic response already? If you can get an organic response already, then if you run any type of, you know, ads for your videos or whatever, then what's going to happen there is you're just gonna kind of scale up, you know, the opportunity for that moment in time that you're running the ads. And then when you turn that off, then you're still gonna be able to get a response because you know how to get a response when people are being presented your uh, content on, you know, home pages, suggested videos, YouTube search and all that. Um, but if you haven't learned that part yet, um, then in that particular case, um, focus all of your efforts right now on you know building up the skills to get that organic response and then from there once you can consistently get that if you wanted to try that feature and keep in mind it's a beta feature um, but if you wanted to try that feature to see you know if it benefited you anyway then that would be where you know where you'd want to try something like that um, but it's definitely not a shortcut right so because of that just make sure you can get that organic response before you uh before you you know think about that kind of stuff or before you do that kind of stuff next um let's see here next up we've got trying to learn bikes again yep. they're back they're back still learning yep motorcycle maintenance says the goal of the channel is trying to learn to create um how to create good informative content and help others learn about diy motorcycle maintenance the question is do you have a best practice recommendation regarding routinely changing out my channel trailer for people who haven't subscribed and for the featured video and returning subscribers oh, yeah. uh says thank you d in advance for your always excellent advice cheers so when it comes to uh actually i'll let you d go what was the question? Okay, I'll do it. So, <laughs> no, no, no. They, they were talking about a strategy for the returning. Ball, ball, yeah, ball. Yeah. You were talking about a strategy for people who are subscribed and people who are not subscribed for the featured video. Uh, do you have a best practice recommendation regarding routinely changing out channel trailer for people who haven't subscribed and for okay. the featured video for returning subscribers? Yeah, so I would think about what your channel goals are, right? So, if someone hasn't subscribed to your channel, think to yourself, what could I put there to get someone to actually subscribe to my channel? That might be a great place to put a video that has a high conversion rate of actually getting people to subscribe to your channel. If your purpose of your channel is to make money, then you can go through there and look in your, look in your, your revenue data to see which one of your videos is driving the most revenue through ads, or maybe you have an affiliate link where you're making a ton of money off of this one video, maybe you wanna put that there. Returning visitors, why would somebody want to return to your channel? And it's usually to see what's going on with your channel to see what your latest video is. So you can consider putting your latest upload there uh, for people who are returning to your channel. So think about what your channel goals are first and, foremost, first and foremost, then think like a viewer and think about what would best benefit them and ben best benefit your goals. Boom. Anything to add? Yeah, that, that, was, that was all good. Yeah, all right. totally agree. Um, next up on the list here, we've got 77 Blurry. 77 Blurry does gaming content. The goal is to grow a community. And the question is, how do I switch niches within the same category? Still a gaming channel, but switching um, what game I do so views are low. So um, uh, when you are changing your games, the very first thing that I would think about is one, if you're like gonna commit anyway, then in that particular case, just go hard in that new direction. But if you're like, if you're going to tiptoe into it and say, you know what, um, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to make videos about a game that I really like to play, but I've got like a few games that I really like to play. So because of that, let me hop into my community feed. And over the next few weeks while I'm putting out, you know, the content on the other game that I'm doing, I'm going to be asking a lot of questions to the people that are interacting with my content, asking them about these other games that I'm, you know, thinking of playing. And I'm going to start polling them and trying to figure out that when I publish, you know, the videos on these other games, which one of these games that I can play that the, that the most viewers uh, that are interacting with my channel, at least the people that are responding to those 
those posts, um, what other, you know, crossover games that they would also enjoy as well, you know, to watch you also play. Um, and also make sure that like when you are doing that, um, that again, you know, it comes down to what it is that you want to do. So like, if you're like, Hey, um, you know, I would just really love to play this game and I don't care, you know, um, I, I just want to go in this new direction and whatever was going on with the old game that I was playing is fine. Then just go in that direction. And from there you just start publishing content in that direction. And then you, you know, eventually, um, you know, people will start responding to that content. YouTube will start showing, I mean, technically at the time of publish with that video, um, uh, uh, you know, YouTube will still, you know, show it to people that are interested in that game, but they're also going to, you know, show it to some of the people that are interacting with your channel that are really engaged in what it is that you're doing as well. So it's those people that might be like the, the, the initial people. problem for that, those but people. the initial performance of your video doesn't necessarily dictate the long-term performance of your video either. So because of that, like right now, when you're in the process of this transition, instead of looking at like your video performance, like the day or the next day after you publish, start thinking like, okay, I'm got since I'm going in this direction anyway, I'm going to start paying attention to like what's happening with these videos over the next like 28 days, over the next 90 days. And, and then you'll start seeing, you know, what's working and what isn't um, over that as you are, you know, as you're publishing everything. There you go. Um, let's see here. Next up on I the... Wanna, I want to let people know if you're yeah, just go. joining us, because mm -hmm. I saw a little spike come in. If you're just joining us and you have a question, there's a link down in the description below. It's going to open up a form. You can drop your question in that form. And it's first come, first serve. Uh, I don't know. How are we doing today on questions? Are we plowing yep. through them? Yeah we're, yeah, we're doing pretty good. Yeah. yeah. So you still have time to get on there and ask your question there. Unless we specifically say we're taking questions from the chat, we will be taking them from the form. Mm-hmm. Yep, 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 yep. Zen Bloke is our uh, is our next question here. Zen Bloke says that they do gaming culture. The goal of the channel says, I love gaming and I love talking about it and I love sharing my thoughts. Question, I'm thinking about starting a podcast, but last time I did, I had a hard time getting people um, to be on it. How do you get voices? Um, so if you are trying to find guests for your podcast, um, just as a heads up, I know if you are a StreamYard user, they actually have a place there where you can go and you can, you know, find, uh, you know, people to be guests on your podcast. But since you're doing gaming specifically or gaming culture, I'm not 100%, you can go look there, um, but I'm not 100% sure if they have a lot of, you know, gaming um, people in there. They might, I'm not sure, um, but it's definitely worth a look, you know, just to confirm. But um, other things that you can do is if you have certain YouTube content creators that you would like to have, uh, you know, come on, then in that case, um, every YouTube channel, as long as the content creator has their channel set up correctly and fully, um, or at least this particular feature, as long as they have this feature set up, um, you can go to the About Me page of any channel on YouTube, and if the content creator um, has their business inquiry area filled out, then you can click on that business inquiry option, confirm that you're not a robot, unless you're a robot, of course, but if you're not a robot, then in that case, um, you can grab their email and you can actually send them an invite to your podcast. So from there, you know, what you would do is you'd say, hey, you know, I have this podcast, try to make it short and sweet, um, but say, hey, I have this podcast, it's about this, you know, um, you know, we have, you know, some episodes that are going to be coming up soon and would really like to have you as a guest. Um, you know, if that's something you're interested in, let me know. And uh, just keep it short and sweet, let them know what's going on. Um, and then, you know, some people respond, some people won't respond. Um, but, you know, if you do that a lot, you'll have some people that'll come through for you. Um, I would start there. Another place where you can do it is if you hop onto Twitter, um, you can also go through Twitter um, to, you know, get in touch with other, you know, people as well. From there, you can DM people, you can also just directly at people um, also. But again, you know, it's always helpful if you're like, hey, you know, I have this gaming thing, you know, I absolutely love, you know, these particular games or the culture of gaming, whatever, just give a really quick blurb like that. And then, you know, invite them on to see if they, uh, you know, are interested in coming on. Um, let's see here. So next up on our list. It's always tricky when you're starting out to it do is. collabs or do anything. It is. Yeah. It, you know, try reaching out to people also who are around the same size as you. Yeah. Because they're also having the same problem. Right. And, you right. know, like in, in that particular case, you know, like if you're reaching out to people, you know, that are that are, you know, that are about where you're at, so to speak, in the journey, um, then in that particular case, it's like, you know, hey, we can do these like all the time. Right. Right. <laughs> like it really yeah. opens you up to some really cool opportunities, you know, when you do that. Of course, you know, people think about it like, let me get this, you know, big person on here or whatever, you know, so that maybe they'll share it or something like that, um, which is a growth strategy for a podcast. But when it comes to, um, you know, uh, you know, building relationships and, you know, things like that, you know, around the content that you're publishing, um, you know, just just 
you know, going uh, horizontal in terms of, you know, reaching out to other people that are, you know, in, in, in a similar part of the journey. Um, you can create some great relationships that will grow over time, you know, together, um, which is which is really cool as well. Hey, Perfect Homes is in the house. Hey, what's going on? Hope that you are doing fantastic. Yeah. So thanks for the advice on splitting my different language channels, though now in the slog of uh, building the first thousand subscribers on the new English channel. Nice, nice, nice. Love it. Nice to see you in here. Hope that you're doing fantastic. Yep. So we've got a uh, math bell. Math bell says that they do biweekly content. Um, the type of channel is education channel. The goal of the channel is to support teachers and parents with elementary math skills and topics. The question is, I just qualified for monetization this morning after three years, two months and 207 videos. It finally happened. Thank God. <laughs> question. <laughs> what should I do first once my application is approved and AdSense is all set up? Um, thanks for all of the great support and tips. So step number one is to go back through your, you know, through your content, make sure that, you know, you have ads turned on, you know, where they need to be turned on, make sure the ad formats that you are um, choosing are the ad formats that you want to have, you know, showing on your videos. Um, in addition to that, um, if if you are going to make content for the sake of getting, I mean, of course, you know, it's, it's going to serve your viewers. But in addition to that, if you're going to make content with the intention of like, okay, I want to make videos that typically get me, you know, a lot more ad money per view, um, than, or per monetized view, then in that particular case, go into your YouTube analytics and start looking at the videos that have the highest uh, CPMs or RPMs in case people are donating to those videos or whatever, you know, once, you know, you, you start getting some of that. Um, but you want to, you know, start doing those things. In addition to that, um, since you are in the, uh, mon uh, the partner program, another thing that you are going to get access to as well is like super chats and super thanks and, you know, those sorts of things. So, you know, because of that, you want to also consider doing those types of things and providing some type of value that would actually you know, encourage people to, uh, you know, super chat and, you know, those types of things in order to, um, in order to be able to tap into that side of monetization as well. Every time we come in here, you readjust that microphone. Yeah. Cause I sit a little bit different. Like, like today I'm turned How more different. Can you sit? Yeah. You have readjusted that yeah. like with from, the knobs from every here? time yeah. we've done a live stream <laughs> since we've ever been live, for years. Oh yeah. Every single why. time you come in here and start. Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Well, once we and get it, that base, it'll be fine. It, that that won't be moved hardly ever. It will. You'll, yeah. you'll, you'll want that again. Yeah. Maybe. Mark my words. Oh, yeah. Maybe he wants to get the base. Like, yeah. Like know, I use at home. Yeah. Like, yeah. So yeah, he, he's going to want that again. Yeah. Mark my words. Next up. Which will be, Words marked. And it Hold always on, ends up these words. It always ends up in Save. the same spot. Hmm. Yeah. Like you like adjust. Well, it? it is. It is a little bit over. Yeah. It's 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 moved just a little bit. <laughs> Poop scoop for noobs. They do. Yeah. They upload when they have time. Scooper biz. Um, the goal of the channel is to become the 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 biggest scoop channel on YouTube by, by providing value for other scoopers. <laughs> The question is, hey, Nick, I'm at 785 subs. Thanks for your advice. Thank you, sir. Um, how do you prevent the hamster wheel of constantly uploading content non-negatively affecting you with the last oh. video you spent time on isn't performing as well as you hoped for? Here's the thing. Here's a reality of YouTube in some cases. We were just talking about Sometimes, this. even when the videos that you're putting out are just crushing in terms of they're doing awesome, sometimes, you know, some content creators will also get negative in those situations as well, um, just due to like burnout and, you know, things like that and, you know, being on the hamster wheel. So, you know, when, when people are, um, publishing videos on a regular basis and it becomes what they do, then in that particular case, like especially, you know, if they're doing it professionally or something, then what happens is they just get so into that routine that it becomes so normal that it can become not like exciting anymore because it's normal. So, uh, so because of that, you have to always try to find like a deeper reason that you're publishing your content. So the thing that I, that I recommend, um, you know, in order to keep yourself on track is just to stay super focused on your goals, um, have very clear goals that are not just based on views and subscribers on your channel. Like in your case, you know, since you are, um, your, your goal is to become the, the biggest scooping channel and providing value to other scoopers, you know, you could also be a little bit more specific there to where you're like, okay, um, over the next, you know, year, I'm, you know, my goal is to help, you know, X amount of scoopers reach like X amount of, you know, business. And then by that, you could start like a little community and then, you know, via email or a Facebook group or discord or something like that. And then literally start tracking the people that you're helping. And by doing that, that can also be something that can motivate you. Like, Hey, we got another one. We got another one. Hey, this person's getting close. We got another one. It gives you something in the kind 
kind of keep an eye on that can also help, you know, keep moving you forward and keep you like excited about what's going on as well. Because like one of the things that, um, that you can experience with this is like, once you get to, once you get things to a place to where you're like, okay, if I publish something, it's at least going to get, you know, some like good views on it or whatever, or if you just get comfortable, then in that particular case, you know, you kind of need some of those things to where you turn the, 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 the focus away from yourself and you kind of point it at other people and you're trying to, you know, kind of give some type of value back that way, um, in order to stay, you know, in order to stay just focused and motivated to do, you know, to do the actual thing. I have a couple of things to say about that. Number yeah. one, Nick and I were just, uh, two or three days ago, we were discussing, um, Vanessa Lau took a break. Uh, some of you might know who Vanessa Lau mm -hmm. is and she made a post on Instagram that really resonated with me and I was talking about yeah. it. She's, she was talking about why she was needing to take a break and I'm not gonna get into the, the whole reason, but one of the things she said really, really hit, you know, hit, I don't wanna say struck a nerve, but it, it, it hit home. And she said that she found herself only working to build a bigger hamster wheel to run in. Mm. And I was like, man, like I feel that. Great framing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she's just built, like everything she was doing was just building a bigger hamster wheel. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought, man, that's that's so well said. And yep. that, that perfectly captures what a, a lot of us are doing here. So mm -hmm. you, like you said, you really have to be focused and, and remember your goals. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's the first thing. Second thing I wanna say is, I hope you do become the biggest scoop channel because yeah. I would love to say I know uh, the largest scoop, scoop channel. channel. Yeah. Uh, totally. Thirdly, last thing I want to say, if you don't have this already, you should make a video about polite ways f to tell a pet owner that they need to scoop their stuff outside. So people who keep coming across issues can like, no. <laughs> so people who keep coming like, hey, man, this person keeps letting their dog, you know, do whatever in my yard. I'm going to get this video and send it to them so they can say, oh, yeah, I'm being a bad I'm being a bad dog owner. Like, I don't know how you would frame that, but like frame that. So a pet owner would go, oh, oh, I'm one of those people. I should clean up after my dog. So they can be offended by the person that sent it to them. Yes. Saying so like, hey, that, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because yeah, so popcorn. For those of you that know popcorn, popcorn assaults D when he comes over. Yeah, so it so bites me. yeah, so popcorn it. bites D's feet. Yeah. yeah, when he comes over. So yeah, D would just, send me that video about like how to you know how to manage your animal. As someone who doesn't own an animal, <laughs> I lack the 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 empathy and, and the consideration to say things in a way that doesn't offend the pet owner. Yeah. I mean, unless it's you, I don't. Yeah. Then I, don't I, I truly yeah, then, then don't, don't care. care. <laughs> I truly don't care. Right, right. but if it were just a total stranger, I yeah. don't want to like offend them. Just like right. hey man. If I could send you a send them a video, yeah, and they just go, oh, like yeah. one pet owner to another pet. Oh, owner. this jerk! I can't believe he sent me this. Right. Yeah. I'm suing. What's you. he trying to say? Right. Yeah. Anyway, just a random idea. Yeah. Dig it. Probably, that video would tank on your channel, but I would really appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> All Tech Nonstop says um, they upload one time per week or more. The type of channel is tech gadgets. The goal of the channel is to introduce people to tech gadgets they may not be aware of. The question, I have a video with over 12% click-through rate and an average percentage viewed of over 45%. I know those numbers aren't the best, um, but those videos are getting a lot fewer impressions and videos with much lower numbers. Are those not the two specs that determine whether you're gets your video gets more impressions. First, there are a lot, there's a ton of information that determines it, but those things are the most heavily weighted. But the other part that you left out of here was how many impressions that you have on those videos. So basically the reason, um, typically, I'm not saying for sure this is your reason, but typically how it works out is this. When you publish a video and that video is doing well in terms of getting views, it's getting you know a, a, a impressions on that video. And when a video gets more impressions, it's going out to people that that are not just the perfect fit, but they're also um, people that are a good fit, but maybe not a perfect fit. And then if those people respond well, then it goes out to a bigger group and so on and so forth. So because of that, when your videos perform well, it typically drives down your click-through rate and it typically drives down um, your average view duration um, on, your, on your video. So because of that, um, a lot of content creators, especially when they're getting started, they'll see those stats in their, in their, in their videos and be like, holy cow, like, but this is the stuff I'm supposed to be working on. And and when they see that, but they're not considering the impressions that they have on the video, then it paints a wildly different picture. So if you go into your analytics, um, the, 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 the stats for your YouTube channel, 
what you can do is go into the one of the videos that has those high metrics on it and then once you click into that go into the analytics and then up in the top right hand side you're going to see um, advanced mode when you click on advanced mode then you're going to see an option to compare when you click on compare there um, then select one of the videos that has done uh, the, where those impressions are, are lower and um, you know it's got more views on it and stuff and see there how many impressions that one has compared to the one that has like the super high stats on it and that's probably going to show you everything it is that you need to know um, and also keep in mind when you do that um, just another way that you might want to look at this is um, if you change the table to a multi metric table then that's also going to just kind of stack the stats right on top of each other so you can do like a direct comparison it's just easier um, that way and then you'll be able to look at you know different things comparing those videos to where it'll start painting a picture on why one is performing better than the other but everything comes down to impressions or the amount of people an impression for those of you that are new, it, an impression is when YouTube shows your content to somebody on the platform. So uh, every one impression that you get is YouTube showing your content to somebody on the platform on one of the different pages of YouTube. So, um, so go look at the impressions that you're getting on the uh, videos with the higher stats compared to the ones that you're getting with the ones on the lower stat, and that'll probably uh, share a lot. But keep in mind also when it comes to your click-through rate, there's other factors too. Like, you know, you are getting 45%. I don't know if that's 45% of like a two-minute video or 45% of like a 30-minute video, um, but another thing that's really important to think about is when it comes to youtube one of the things that youtube um you know kind of broadcasts everywhere is that they focus on viewer satisfaction so when it comes to the click-through rate if people are clicking on your video at a high rate but they're not um enjoying the content you know that much then in that particular case they're going to end up leaving which means that the watch time per impression that you're getting on the video um isn't going to be you know that high so you know because of that you always want to make sure that when you're thinking of the thumbnail that you're thinking of okay I'm looking at the click-through rate but I'm also looking to see the watch time that I'm getting from this and the reason you want to think about that is because if people are clicking on the video and you're getting a good amount of watch time from the individual viewers what that's doing is that showing YouTube that when people click on the video that they're getting what they expected and that's why they're watching the video for a longer period of time right so you're creating that satisfactory experience that they're going through um, so keep all of those things in mind um, let's see here. What is that one? Um, so, uh, Renee, um, says that, uh, making videos for your core audience is great. I do it all the time. Just set expectations differently from, um, broad appeal videos. Great tip. Love that. Um, next on our list here, we got her heel review. Her heel review does TV and movie reviews. Um, the goal of the channel is a thousand, um, and community of movie lovers. Um, I think it's a thousand. Yep. Yeah. Um, the question is, I'm super nervous about going live regularly. Um, what advice would you give me to get started? I love this question. So when it comes to live streaming, a lot of people are super intimidated by it because, um, live streaming kind of takes away the editing, right? So live streams aren't perfect. You might stumble around your words kind of like I just did. Um, you might say a lot of filler words, things like that. It's just not that like perfect polished thing and everything is happening on in real time. So you're just broadcasting yourself out live to the internet. And if you screw up, then, you know, a lot of people are worried about that because they're worried about, you know, feeling stupid or people like looking at them in some way to where, you know, they have some bad judgment about them. But at the end of the day, when it comes to live streaming, people are extremely tolerant. People know that you're just doing the thing in real time. So because of that, if you lose your train of thought, if you have tech problems, you know, all of those things, people are extremely tolerant of that when it comes to live streams. So the very first thing um, that I recommend is that you try to stream to yourself. So you can do this inside of like StreamYard, for example, to where you stream, um, to where you technically just hit record. Um, but I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to be, it's going to be different when you're actually live, but that's just a, a, a first run. And you can do that inside of other things too, like OBS. And, you know, you can technically stream to YouTube privately as well but when you are doing that the whole purpose of that is so you can go through the process to see what the process is like and you can just kind of practice like hey this is what I'm gonna say in the beginning this is how I'm gonna kind of you know lead into you know any content that I'm gonna be doing and things like that um, but it just gives you that time to practice what it is that you are going to be doing so you can just get comfortable with that and then from there when you actually go live your brain is gonna work a little bit differently I mean it could um, I know for us we talk about this um, from time to time like 
when you record something, you know you're recording it and you know people aren't watching it. So at any moment you can say, okay, let me let me do that again. Like when we were recording that first clip here today, um, because I'll probably end up, you know, putting that somewhere. So because of that, you know, I started it over a few times because it was recording. But if I was just answering that question live and we weren't recording, then I wouldn't have, you know, restarted what it was that I was saying. I would have just said the thing. So um, so what I recommend that you do is practice it, um, you know, see how you feel about it, make sure all the tech is working and all that stuff. And then from there, um, go and actually do it live so you can see what that feels like. But when you go live, make sure that you have fallbacks in place. So fallbacks are notes that you have to where if you end up just blanking out, let's say you're talking and then whatever reason your brain works against you and is like, hey, you know what, I'm just gonna forget what I'm saying here for a minute. Then in that particular case, you can take a quick glance at your notes and you have bullet points there of one, what it is that you're gonna to be you know talking about in your stream but two you also have your fallbacks in there to where you can quickly say okay um you know uh i forgot what it was that i was saying but i look at my note here and the the note says you know talk about you know the day that you had yesterday or something like that and then at that moment you can see that note and you can say oh you know before we get into you know the next thing that we're going to be talking about you know um, i got to tell you guys about this day that i had yesterday and then you know you start talking about that and then while you're doing that you're just glancing over your notes while you're talking about whatever happened yesterday because it's easy it's just something that you went through you're just telling that story so you don't have to really focus hard on it and then from there you're looking at your notes trying to get yourself back on track and then you can just hop right back in with a uh, you know but anyway um back to what we were talking about and then you you know continue on with the conversation so having those fallbacks is really helpful in addition to that make sure that you have a be right back screen um, this is a really basic type of thing but one thing that can happen is when you're live streaming you know sometimes you'll have to use the bathroom sometimes somebody might like knock on the door you might have some other you know issue maybe you your throat gets dry and you start coughing a lot or something like that you can just hit that be right back screen it lets people know that like hey I something something came up so you know I'm gonna be right back um, and then that gives you a little bit of time to deal with whatever it is that you have to deal with and then you can get on with it like a raid from the police yep yeah, you're like, oh, the, the, the FBI's here. I'll, I'll be right back, guys. Right. Yeah. 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 Something yeah. like that. And be right back. Screen goes up. Yeah. And then oh, they just hear, oh, 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 get on the ground. Get on the yeah. ground. Get on the yeah. ground. Get on the ground. <laughs> they got a weapon. <laughs> That's a stream deck. I swear it's a stream deck. It's a stream deck. I swear. They got a stream deck in their hand. Take him down. Uh, Pet Connection International says that they um, upload when they have time. They've been on YouTube for a year or more. The type of channel is Pet Care Advice. Um, the goal of the channel is to improve the lives of pets around the world by sharing evidence-based care information. The question is, what are the best ways to promote products and services and videos without seeming too spam? Amy. D, any ideas? How to promote products and services without being too scammy. Mm -hmm. Spammy. Spammy. Yep. If you're doing it within your video, which I hope is what they're asking mm -hmm. for, try to figure out a way in your video to solve a solution with whatever it is you're trying to promote. Solve a problem. So, solve a solution, yeah. Solve a problem with whatever it is that you're trying to promote. But you what, can always solve a solution with a problem. You can, yeah, that's what <laughs> yeah, I like to do. Absolutely when solve everything a solution is fine, with a problem. When yeah. everything is fine, yeah. I like to put a problem in there. <laughs> that's, that's what I like to do. Right, like try to work something in naturally. I, I think those sorts of ads work the best. Man, as soon as somebody says, and, and I've done this on my channel too, uh, where it's like, okay, now I'm going to, talk about the sponsor man immediately i'm just like okay i'm gonna i'm gonna skip past this but when you don't, I don't I'll, I'll watch them sometimes if it's something well, that i think is relevant no, then i'll watch one of those it, people but, i'm yeah. one of these people right right I, I can't be the only one that skips through totally that. yeah right but if you can find a way to work it in to where it fits naturally with the video instead of just running like a commercial i think that's where the win is and the second thing is astronaut astronaut and, and the second thing is be respectful like like you, you don't take your audience for dummies. Don't right. just say, hey, this this company wants me to just push this product and I don't really care what it is. Right. So I'm just going to disrespect my audience and just try to unload this thing. on. Don't do that. Respect your audience and only put out products that they would that they would appreciate and it could actually help them. Yeah. If it's not going to help your audience, you're wasting your time. Yeah. So be selective about what it is that you're trying to sell in the first place. Other things you can do is you can also, you know, passively do it. So like, um, for example, if it's if it's like your own products, then in that particular case, if you have a website or something like that, then when you're first introducing yourself in your videos, um, you know, like if it was me, I'd be like, you know, hey, I'm Nick, what's going on, blah, blah, blah. Um, so one thing that you can do there is you can have a lower third, which is basically just like a little graphic that comes up and like the, the, the lower third of your video. Kind of like that. Um, yeah, kind of like that. Um, but basically you have a, a lower third that comes up in your video and it has your name on it, but then 
then underneath that, it has like a little thing um, as well to where it has like your web address, right? Or maybe it says, you know, to learn how to take get better care of your pet, visit, you know, uh, you know, your website, you know, dot com. Um, and by doing that, it's just like a subtle way to let people know that it's there um, as they're, you know, coming into the video. In addition to that, you can also have other graphics that pop up. You know, I wouldn't overwhelm them with the graphics. Just kind of, I, I put it in the beginning as part of my lower third. So it's super subtle there because what I'm actually trying to do there is spread awareness, but really I'm trying to get them into the video, but I want to let people know that I have that thing available. And then when you're actually, you know, deep into the video, then you can have a little graphic that pops up that says something about, you know, your website or your product or whatever and where to get it. Um, you can also do fun things like we do here. Um, for example, um, here, you know, while we're doing this stream, from time to time, you'll see graphics like this pop up where we'll say, you know, that there's things available down in the description. We have that version and this version. Um, but the idea is just those little subtle things can just let people know that they're, you know, that they're down there. Other things you can do as well is you can also, if you want to be more aggressive, is you can just tell people in the video, hey, by the way, you know, if you, uh, you know, if you want to get the best products for your pet or whatever, I have a link down in the description that'll take you to my website where we only feature the best and most, you know, safe products for your pet or you know however you want to frame it and then say but anyway and then get right back into you know the video itself and by doing that you're just bringing awareness without cramming it down people's throat and telling them why they got to get it and why it's so important and blah blah, blah. you're just bringing it to their attention kind of like in passing sort of i almost sent you a video just a couple of days ago i was watching a, a video and for the life of me i can't remember the name of the channel but the channel is about architecture mm. uh, it's about architecture and the whole this particular video was about architecture and cyberpunk movies hmm. and how society is starting to do that and history of where they even get the idea for cyberpunk architecture that sort of thing so she's going on and going over you know some of the movies and the architecture and the, and the different ways of doing it and then she's standing in front of like this supercomputer type thing like this very cyberpunk looking wall and this wall is talking to her and i'm just like oh that's an interesting part of the video and then the wall says something about i forget exactly what it was but something about tracking her whereabouts and she's why well, know that's not possible because i'm using nord vpn and then she goes into this and i was like wow nice wow completely had me and it was so well done that i did i you know I, I watched it and they just played that into the whole security thing and like this overreaching you know computer was trying to like get her information and i was like wow that is just so well done so well, I almost that sent is it to good. you, and then I yeah, thought I don't, good. I didn't care enough to send it to you. Yeah, but it was really good. So, um, Nomadic well Introvert, done. thank you for the uh, super chat. It says, what's the best way to put ads on your video when monetizing it for maximum profit? Should I just do skippable ads only, or do all ads um, available to me? My videos are thirty plus super long. Um, I don't want to ruin the video with too many ads. So, um, uh, of course, you want to do skippables and unskippables on the way in, um, and then from there just drop them occasionally. So YouTube has the option to where they can auto drop them. But if you're putting together like 30 minute videos, I'm guessing that you have, you know, some pretty, you know, like you're taking people through something. So if that's the case, um, then I would put them in there where you think it would be a good fit and a place to where it would make sense to drop them, not where it's like right at the, you know, right at some point to where, you know, maybe people might be kind of on the fence about leaving the video anyway, right before you, you know, come into something else, you wouldn't want to drop them there, um, you know, but you would want to just put them in the video in a place to where as you edited the video you would be like you know what this would probably be you know a, a place where i could kind of drop that ad for people that are not using youtube premium um or you can just skip the um you know the mid-roll ads altogether if you want to if you're like putting together documentaries or you know some type of um you know work to where you're like yeah you know what these ads are actually going to kind of take away from the experience that people are having for the people that are getting those monetized ads um so because of that i'm not even going to put in the mid-rolls but if you want to maximize it though finding places to put those mid-rolls in is definitely something you want to do um in addition to that youtube also has the option to put the ads at the end of the video um there i wouldn't do that either because um instead i would just try to get people to go to watch another video right um and then that way even though your videos are 30 minutes i would still try to get people to uh to watch another video because if they make it to the end of a 30 minute video like they're in right so they're digging your stuff <laughs> so i would just try to get them to um to watch a you know another video um instead of putting them at the end but again that's another one that comes down to your call like if you're willing to just make the you just fully maximize it then in that case you know just turning on everything would be the win there um but you know when it comes to just thinking about the viewers you know with some of that um just thinking like okay well when they get to the end it's i'd rather just have them go to another video and uh um and then when it comes to where you're putting the mid rolls or if 
you're going to use the mid rolls, I would just base that on the experience that you're putting together for uh, for your for your viewers and your content. Some so, people are totally against those in terms of content creators. Some people are totally against mid rolls. Other people, you know, it doesn't matter to them. Um, and you know, really, the only people that see them are people that are not premium users. Um, but you know, yeah, your your call in terms of exactly what to do there. There's the video. 700,000 views in four weeks. It's fiction or reality. Nice. Yeah. Nice. It, go, go watch that ad. It's, okay. it's good. It's super okay. clever. Next up, we have Soft Symphony. Soft Symphony, um, they do daily content. They've been on YouTube for less than six months. They do soft music instrumentals. The goal of the channel is to grow organically views, watch hour, and subscribers. The question is, my channel is struggling. Will creating a new channel help me? So when it comes to a new channel as a content creator if your channel is struggling but you know how to get activity then in that case you know if you started a new channel about something completely different then you have you know the skill sets already to start that channel and it probably will have a good start um, but if your channel just isn't doing well just starting a new channel on the same exact thing like that isn't going to just you know suddenly you know make everything better um, because if the channel's not doing well it's not doing well because people aren't responding to the content in the way that you would like them to respond to the content that would help everything do well so because of that that's the problem like if you were to start a new channel you'd be just kind of putting a band-aid on it at that moment in time without actually dealing with the the problem so uh in that case i would actually focus on the problem of you know going in and trying to figure out how exactly people are responding to your content by using your YouTube analytics and then from there uh, making the decisions that you need to make uh, in the content itself to try to make everything better and of course building the skills um, that you need to you know make everything better um, as well so for example you know with that like um, yesterday when we were doing the uh, channel review stream on uh, the tube spanner channel um, one of the things uh, that was pulled up there is somebody uh, you know came in and they you know their name ended up getting picked or whatever and their thumbnails were like really, really bad. Like the content looked good. Their their titles were okay. The value that they were offering was awesome. Are you throwing me e under the bus? Everything, no. Okay. E everything was everything was good, but their thumbnails were just horrific. Are you sure you're um, not throwing me under the bus? And with that, one of the one of the things, like if they would have just said, you know what, I'm gonna just go start another channel because this isn't working. Are you sure you're not throwing me under again, the bus? Again, <laughs> they wouldn't have been able to, you know, fix the actual root problem there, and they would have walked away from something that you know is potentially good or potentially really good when all they needed to do is fix the thumbnails instead of having to restart an entire new YouTube channel right so just make sure that you're you know thinking about you know those types of things you threw me under the bus yeah I, I was talking about D it was, Roger it was all Wakefield's D. in the house ladies and gentlemen Roger Roger has up, a new man? podcast a new video s podcast oh nice yeah nice I, I, yeah on Instagram uh, he always pops up. It's like something about the trade, the trade show, the tradesman of the show. Oh, nice! And it's good. The clips that he's using, is, it's really good. Nice. He's interviewing other people on the trades. Oh, nice! Fantastic. Congratulations to that launch, yeah, it Roger. Great, man. Nice, great. love it. I'll see you in um, uh, October um, at uh, at Vid Summit. Hey, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we've got um, 86th. 86th has been on YouTube for a year or more. They have a uh, channel that helps cooks and chefs. The question is, I'm in the YouTube Partner Program, and my question is, do I need to change anything in any of my descriptions indicating that I'm making money from YouTube? Also, do I legally need to put anything in my description when I promote things from my own spread shop in my videos? So um, in terms of promoting your spread shop, no. Um, in terms of any disclaimer that you're making money from YouTube, you don't need to do that as well. So all of that stuff is at is part it's called the trade talks uh rogers uh, rogers yeah. show yeah the clips yeah. are really good roger whoever's uh sending those out man they're doing a good job yeah so if you're a trades person go check out the uh the trade talks yeah, yeah super cool yeah uh, but the uh, yeah, like when it comes to adding those types of disclaimers, the only place that you have to really do that is when you are getting sponsored content or if you're promoting um, affiliate content, then you have to, you know, put disclosures around the affiliate stuff, um, letting people know that you have that. And then if you're doing sponsored videos, then you have to, you know, let people know that it's sponsored content. And the reason for both of those is because like if you're promoting your own stuff, right, like your spread shop shirt, then in that case, it's kind of obvious that, you know, it's like, hey, this is your stuff. But when you are promoting something as an affiliate, it, the reason that the FTC wants you to add those disclaimers and the same thing as a sponsor is because if you're making money off of it, then in that case, you're the way that you're explaining the product and the way that you're framing the whole thing and the all the feedback that you're giving could be skewed in some way because you're incentivized by money. So because of that, they just want the viewers to know that you are, you know, that you are making money from the thing and that your opinions might be biased because of that money that you're making. They usually are biased. Yeah. 
And that's a tricky thing for creators. It is. Yeah. That's why it's so important to, to just, you know, promote stuff that you use, promote stuff that you actually believe in before you promote something like get it in your hands, get Get it in your hands and be like, does this suck or not? Right. Is this something that I haven't actually used? Yeah. You know, like like once you get to the point where you start having people wanting to send you things, uh, I'm very clear with anyone who wants to send me something. And I say, this doesn't guarantee I'm going to make a video about it. If I like it, oh, here you go. Getting out of here. See ya. ya. All right. Welcome to the Dean Emmons show, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to answer all the real questions that this guy doesn't want to answer. Now, so about about getting products sent, I'm very clear and very transparent. And I say, you can send me whatever you want if I like it. And I think my audience will like it and it's quality. Maybe I'll make a video about it. Right. I, I don't I don't put myself under obligation to make a video about anything. A lot of people, a lot of these companies will send you something even after you say that to them and make sure that you have that history. And they'll say, you're going to make a video about it. And I'll say, no, I, did, I didn't like it. It fell apart. It broke. Didn't work. Too complicated. X, Y, Z. Yeah, Nick went to grab the East play button. You got it. You got it. All right. Let's see what's going on here in the chat. See if there's anything I can answer while he's gone because I do not have access to the form. So you've got about five seconds to ask a question before he comes back. Uh, let's see if there's anything in the chat here. And he's coming back. Hurry up. Hurry up. If you've got a question, get it. Oh, no. He's got. Yeah, we're going to go back to the form in just a second. There you go. You missed it. All you right. had your opportunity to cut in front of the line without a super chat. <laughs> and you all and every single everybody in here was sleeping. What, what happened? Nothing. I was like, you got an opportunity to ask a question out of the chat. Oh. Jump right to the front of the line without a super chat. And everybody's like, yeah, you're going to Bid Summit. Love it. Love it. I'm going to Bid Summit. Yeah, I'm going to Bid Summit. So I'll see you there. If you're going to Bid Summit, yeah, I'll definitely, uh, definitely see you there. Super excited to uh, go this year. They're going to be in a new location in um, Dallas, Texas. So uh, I'm uh, super excited to see what that location is like. And it's technically Roger's backyard. Bid uh, Summit is going to be in Roger's, in Roger's literal backyard. backyard. In his backyard. <laughs> Yeah, oh, that's awesome. we're gonna have tents. <laughs> it's gonna be a tent city. It's gonna be like Burning Man, but for creators in Rogers' backyard. That would actually be really cool, like yeah. a Burning Man for creators. Yeah. yeah, that'd be that'd be great. And you could burn my play button, <laughs> right? Right? Yeah. <laughs> but like, yeah, it's like it, that's how it starts, or just like smashing it. Yeah. Yeah. So hey, Roger, what, videos. What is what is the weather like? Hot, in that probably. Part of Texas for Vid Summit. I'm curious. Because Texas is generally hot. Fish Head Videos yeah. says uh, they've been on YouTube for less than six months. Uh, they do fish, camp, boat, and homestead content. The goal is fun and eventually to make some money. The question is, YouTube sets my mobile lives to unlisted automatically as soon as I oh, end my man. stream. How can I set it up to go public automatically so I don't lose the watch time while it was live? Um, is it because I have under 1,000 subs? So all you have to do, go into your upload defaults um, in your YouTube channel. And in your upload defaults, if you're doing everything on a phone, because you mentioned that you're on mobile live stream, streams. It's easier if you can do this on a computer. If you can't get it to it on a computer, then you can go in um, on your mobile device using desktop mode because I don't think they've added this functionality yet in the Creator Studio um, um, in terms of the app, the Creator Studio app. But what you want to do is um, you want to go into your settings and then in your settings, um, you're going to have something called upload defaults. Click on that. And then when you go in there, one of the options for your um, upload, or I'm sorry, there's two things. I'm, I, I apologize. You actually want to go into your live stream settings, and in your live stream settings, it has the option there to uh, of what to do when your live stream is complete. So currently, that is set to be unlisted. Um, so you need to make sure that you change that to where your live stream will be public when you are finished with it. Um, we actually get this a lot in like the, the the Streamyard Facebook group and stuff, where people are like, "Hey, you know, my videos keep disappearing after I." I live stream. Um, it's because you need to turn that um, that particular option on. Roger says, says it'll be nice in October. Welcome, says, welcome to my house. To my house. You heard yeah. that, everybody. There yep. are 247 people in here. <laughs> Party at Rogers. Party at Rogers' house. <laughs> but you get, yeah, but you got to have a bit summit to take it to show. You got to have the wristband. You got to have the wristband to get in. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> So next up on the uh, list here, we have Open Air Outdoors. Open Air Outdoors. Hey, really quick on the on the live streaming question. Also, just as good measure for when you're publishing your videos too. Um, for that, don't change that to public. You want to make sure that that's unlisted for your videos. Because when you publish a video so that you have time to add thumbnails and your title and all that stuff, do not change that one to public for the videos. You want to make sure that you're doing that for your live streams, not for the, not for the video. 
just want to make that clear really quick. Um, so I don't want people like, hey, all of a sudden my videos, when I go up, I don't have time to put them together or add a thumbnail and everything. They're just like published. So Outdoorsman content um, is the uh, is the next one here from Open Air Outdoors. And the goal of the channel is to uh, engage with people and make some money. And the question is, how many uh, views per 28 days should I have before doing Amazon affiliation? So I'm pretty sure these days that Amazon actually has a follower number that they prefer that you have. Um, it's not necessarily like your views per 28 days. It's more about the follower number that you have. Um, so the very first thing that I would do is I would try to get in. And when you try to get in, they'll decline you and they'll tell you why. Um, and if it's because your follower account, then just, you know, work on, you know, on, on increasing the amount of like subscribers that you have. And then from there, you know, after you reach like the next threshold, maybe, maybe if you're at 500 now, then maybe, you know, at, at a thousand, you reach out again. Um, if you're at a thousand now, then maybe reach back out at like 2000 and just keep trying until they let you in. But it's more about follower accounts um, on Amazon than it is the, uh, amount of views that you're getting the money that you're going to make is going to depend on the views you're getting but the but the acceptance into the program is based on your follower count um, next up, we got the Coding Wiz. Coding Wiz does bi -week weekly content. They do coding and programming. Um, the goal of the channel is to provide entertaining informational coding videos for young teens. And the question is, hey, Nick, um, so I'm struggling to be consistent when it comes to my schedule on YouTube. My goal is to post one per week, but lately I haven't been able to hit that, partially because of my procrastination. I love that you're owning it. That's step one, right? Um, but mainly because of editing and how long it takes. Um, should I reduce the amount of editing um, I do to my videos to meet my upload goals, even if that means my videos are a bit worse with less editing? or continue with what I'm doing and just upload once or twice a month. Um, so first, just keep in mind that as you as you go through the through the process of like learning how to edit videos and stuff like that, you're going to get faster. So right now, like if you're if you're just getting rolling, how long do you say? Yeah, you've been here less than a year. So like as you're going through the progress, like or the process, the more that you uh, that you upload, the more that you edit and all of that, like the faster you're going to get because you're going to start using like keyboard shortcuts, um, just like you do in your coding, right? When you first started coding, you're running into all these errors that you're probably having to fix and you know trying to figure out you know that and figuring out how to like organize everything and all that but now since you're teaching people coding you can probably do that stuff in your sleep right so um the video editing is the same way to where as you go through and you start organizing things and you start using templates like okay these are all my video graphics and i have them all in this template so anytime that i start a video then i have these in there or maybe i've got my video graphics in there and then i've got like a stack of you know music tracks that i you know can select from to where you know there are different moods and stuff to where i can kind of slide them around and use them where i need them but to where you you know fill out those sorts of things or you prepare those sorts of things so that you're just more organized when you're putting it together in addition to that you'll get more used to the interface and just learn you know hey okay i need to go here to do this and here to do this so it just it gets a lot faster as you go along plus now with ai and the stuff that's coming out like there's something called i think it's like autopod autopod for premiere yeah, yeah. autopod for premiere to where um to where basically it just goes through and it'll just cut out all the silence of your videos um and it makes that part faster you know you have things like that that are available now and it's going to continue getting you know easier in, in the future as well um but you know i would just lean on the side of like okay right now you know like i just need to like learn those things but if you want to um not or, if you're already in motion with that stuff and you're still wanting to make it faster, then in that case, you know, a little bit less graphics, um, figuring out the things that when you are editing, they do take the most time. Um, just trying to do those a little bit less can also be helpful, but you want to make sure that you are paying really close attention to how people are responding to the videos. But I can tell you, you don't need tons and tons and tons of stuff in your videos in order for people to enjoy them. Um, um, I used to, be extremely heavy with all the fancy stuff that I was doing in my videos. And I loved it because, you know, it made my videos look cool and, you know, all that. They didn't um, look cool. And, you thought they looked cool. And they what I cool. did, and this is before I had a video editor, but what I what I did is I started scaling back. And I was like, okay, let me not add motion to every word that I put on the screen and see if it makes a difference or not. And it didn't. Um, let me, instead of putting, you know, um, things happening on the screen every, you know, 10 seconds, um, let me stretch it out to 15 and see if it matters. It didn't. So, uh, like, when it comes to those sorts of things, just, you know, kind of slowly pulling back on them and seeing kind of what that threshold is of what people will enjoy and what they won't. Because at the end of the day, people aren't necessarily coming to your videos to see the B-roll and, you know, things like that. They're coming there to get the value out of the video. And then, of course, you have to be able to keep them entertained through that. And part of that is adding B-roll and different eye candy so it doesn't get stagnant. But you can probably minimize the amount of that stuff that you're doing to speed things up. Um, in addition to that, 
I'm not sure what you're using for your um, for everything that you're doing, but if you are doing if you're using like uh, Adobe Audition for your audio processing as an example, then in that particular case, you can also set up macros inside of Adobe Audition to where it's like, okay, I'm going to you know either one open it up directly inside of like Premiere for example, and um, into Adobe Audition if it's all one you know clip, and then I'm just going to run my typical thing that I you know uh, my macro and it's going to go ahead and just process everything for me and then I save it and then bam it's right back in there and it's done or I'm going to export it out of Premiere if it's all clips and then drop it into uh, Adobe uh, Audition there run that macro and then same exact thing pull it back in and then done but it's just going through the process of doing that you know every single step of that every time you know it adds time so when you start using macros and you know these other little things like that um it can make a it can make a really big difference other things when it comes to editing is um if you work in clips um i've found that to be faster so everybody has their different workflows and stuff but me i find it faster to record in clips and to record for the edit so what i mean by that is like when i'm recording something i'm thinking about how it's going to go in the video and i'm thinking how of how the video is going to be put together even when i'm not editing the videos i'm thinking about how the video is going to be put together so I can record what I need instead of recording just a bunch of stuff and then, you know, sending it over to, you know, have somebody put it together. So when you record for the edit, it can also speed, you know, speed things up a bit. Any more tips for speeding up editing? Yeah, so two things. You, you touched on this. Uh, when we start learning how to edit, it's really easy to over edit. Yeah. You touched on this totally. briefly. And I, I just want to stress the importance of learning how to not over edit. And this is where you can really go in and look at your audience retention, right? You can watch the video, watch the, the needle go along with audience retention, see where people are falling off. And, and you can, you know, like you said, try some different things, uh, different things out. Try getting rid of some of the things that are slowing you down. Simplify your editing. Because like you said, the viewer's not there to watch your fancy edits. Right. They're there. Like to that transition isn't going to be like, oh my gosh. So, whoa, subscribe. Uh, subscribe. Yeah. Right. I mean, if it's something crazy, it might. <laughs> if but it's still, like a filmmaker watching right. your stuff, they might right. respect it and subscribe right. for that. Right, right. But, but, but you know, the average person. 99% of the yeah, people they're not even watching gonna notice. They're not even going to notice. Yeah. So simplify everything. Uh, yeah, that was really my main. Oh, yeah. Another thing, if you're recording in clips, this is something that I do because I, you know, I'll hit record. And if I know I say the correct thing, I hit stop, right? If I hit record, I say something and I know it's incorrect, I, I clap my hands one time and then I stop recording. What that does is once I pull all of the footage into the timeline, I look at every clip that has a huge audio spike at the end and I know that's a bad clip. And I automatically grab them all and I delete everyone with an audio spike and I'm only left with good clips. Man, that speeds up editing so much for me. I mean, everybody has their own way of doing things, but that saves me a ton of times because I'm only working with good clips. And then it comes down to just, you know, cutting out some awkward pauses and, you know, putting in some B-roll. Saves a ton of time getting rid of the bad stuff. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Love it. Okay, so um, next up on our list here, um, we've got Authentically Kyle. Authentically, Kyle, um, they've been on YouTube for less than six months. They do travel and lifestyle content. The goal of the channel is to bring joy with my escapades. I record and share with my unique experiences with those who like travel and seeing or hearing a quirky take on travel food or what life experience I come across. The question is, if I have a copyright claim on my videos, uh, you download off of Canva Pro paid, but you forgot to connect your channel. Is there a way to reverse that decision? By the way, um, I make sure I connect now. So I'd reach out to Canva there and I would see um, if they can help you, you know, navigate that because they'll have the record of you being a paid subscriber there so that they can, you know, um, handle that on their end. That would be the that would be the path that I would take for that. So I just want to put this on the screen and just rub this in your nose just a little bit. Just say that out loud for me. Just the first. D words. is a genius and save me go. time from paying for no, no, just D is a genius. Just, just stop with the first four words. Why don't you like the script? No, just say oh, no, just say the beginning. Oh, yeah, it's D is a genius and save me stop. time from no, no, paying no. for the script. No, no, just D is a genius and just leave. I just want to hear you say it. Want to be a pro wrestler? Me too. No, no, I just want to hear you say it. Just say it. D save me time from paying for the script. <laughs> is that what you're wanting? Just get it out. Come on, just say D it. D save D just, just save me time. D just, just save me time from paying for the script. Just, just say it. I Do you save me time from paying for the script? You say it. I, just, I just wanted to come out of your mouth. Hold on. D saved me time from paying for the script. Maybe I'm saying the script wrong. Just, maybe maybe that's just, it. Come on. 
right. So next, <laughs> next up on the list, we've got Game Kitty. A, he is such a little brother. Game Kitty Euphoric um, says they upload one time per week or more. They've been on YouTube for a year or more. They do gaming content. The goal of the channel is business mindset. One day, um, I want to I want YouTube to be my career. And the question is, um, what is a niche in gaming? Is it picking a genre of games to focus, a single game to focus, a group of games to focus? Can we be a variety gamer and still find success? Absolutely. You can be a variety gamer. And, and this is really important to know. You can be a variety gamer or just a variety creator and still find success. It's just that it's a typically a faster path is if you do niche down in some way and you serve a very specific audience. Because what happens is you create an entire YouTube channel that becomes an entire resource for people that like to enjoy that type of content, right? So because of that, it's Super beneficial chat. and it can help you know speed things up if you focus on serving a core type of a specific type of viewer that likes to watch a specific type of content and by doing this it helps you also know what to focus on it helps you know the value that you're bringing it helps you be able to define that person you know so that you know that like okay is this going to be a good fit for you know this audience if the answer is yes you publish it if it's not then you're like yeah i'm not going to make that video um but in terms of um what a niche is in gaming so gaming itself is a niche but but in terms of like sub niches you have like you know let's play um you know the people that just do let's play content that would be a niche within the, the gaming space people that just do like game guides and things like that that would be like another like sub niche um and you know of course you know you can play different games and things like that as well but again you fall into that situation to where it's like okay if i'm playing a bunch of different games then in that case if i publish a video on fortnite and then i publish a video on call of duty the people that are like really into fortnite right now but they're not playing much call of duty they wouldn't necessarily respond to the call of duty videos if they're like really engaged in the channel and youtube shows it to them anyway then you know they might not respond to it which would hurt the click-through rate um, or they might click on it just because it's yours and they think because they're a regular viewer and not a content creator they think that if they just click on it and come in give you a view leave a quick comment it's going to help you out in some way so they do that but then they abandon your video quickly um, and then it works in reverse so you publish that same fortnite and cod content well if the people that are watching the cod content get presented that fortnite content and they're not playing fortnite then in that particular case then it becomes a piece of content that isn't isn't you know it doesn't matter to them so when you focus on a on a specific you know game it makes it to where you know all of the content in your channel is about that game and somebody can come and watch every video that you do they can come and, and hang out with you while you're live streaming that game and you're doing like a let's play they can watch the game guides on it they can do any tips and tricks videos like anything you want um you know theory on what you think the next you know release is going to be when they do the update which is probably going to be coming soon all of those things um you know you can do when you serve like a particular game the downside of that is it kind of pigeonholes you into that game which is a thing that you know big problem that you see a lot of people you know when they come into these streams they're like man i've been making videos on this game but i don't like playing that game anymore so that is where it's like okay well i grew the channel on this but now i'm going to slowly start pivoting into something else maybe if you are doing games like fortnite battle royale and you're doing like cod battle royale then maybe you know the next thing would be like another battle royale game or let's say you're doing like race car games games and motorcycle racing games and things like that then maybe the next game would be like another you know race car game or something like that or you just pivot into something else because gamers like to play a bunch of different games um, but it's just when you can be that resource for that one thing then it really helps speed things up because then every video that YouTube recommends to the people that you're trying to target when they come in and they respond to that video then YouTube starts understanding okay people that are interested in this Fortnite content they're 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 loving this because this creator makes you know really good content so every video that comes out people are loving this so because of that we're going to find other people on the platform that are also loving fortnite content and we're going to present the content on on you know some of these videos to them and see if they respond to it and if they do then they'll just keep that whole thing going and that's like how you you know how you get a lot of traction on youtube is you know that particular process so um so you know you can do it you know just full variety channels do that you know all the time but it just is typically faster if you you know focus on a very specific you know uh thing for a very specific type of viewer so roberto blake's in the house Roberto, Blake, doing, roberto? Up, Hope you're doing so awesome. he says um you can be a variety creator but it's just playing the game on hard mode right totally oh it's a great reference or yeah. nightmare mode so as a non-gamer I, yeah. I, I i understand hard mode what is nightmare mode more than hard what? yeah harder than hard difficult yeah. yeah difficult yeah so there's like hard yeah, I don't know about like it. I think and he's just. Like, I think he's just making that reference. Like, well, I, I don't know. I mean, it could be like a yeah, game. There might reference. be I don't a know. game that has, or there right. might be some games that have that. But like, typically, it's just like a hard, you know, like a hard mode, like uh, you know, like mode. hard, you know, moderate or easy. Super chat. 
So um, artistic, uh, what does that say? Artistic designs. Thank you for the uh, super sticker there. I appreciate it. That was a super oh, sticker. Super I hope sticker. you hit the right button. I didn't. Ready? Ready? Shame on you, D. Ready? I got to make sure I got the right one. Hold on. All Hold right. On. Hold on. I make that says I subbed to Roberto Blake last night. Awesome. You're going to love the content over there. Oh, Roberto yeah. makes amazing videos. He helps out content creators in such a massive way. Here You're going to love the content over there. Everybody here. Super sticker. Yeah, Everybody was, here should be following uh, Roberto Blake on Twitter, on yeah, LinkedIn, yeah, yeah, on yeah. YouTube, on anywhere anywhere he's putting out content. He he adds so much value, and he's also like really transparent about stuff. Like I typically don't show like stats and things like that. Roberto is like, hey, here's everything. Yeah, like here's the money I'm making. Here's the yeah. stats of my, all my right. videos, and all that stuff. Like he just puts it out there. It's great. Um, yeah, like follow follow his uh, follow his stuff. So um, let's Doom see here. Yeah, so Doom has nightmare mode. mode. Nice, 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 nice nightmare mode yeah that just sounds hardcore it does it does oh, here it goes it says um there are games that have a level beyond hard mode and they are often referred to as nightmare mode challenge mode champion mode or something like that nice nice yeah never heard of, not a not a gamer so wow that's bearded iron is our next question mode. here they um, gonna, upload one time per week or more it's gonna be my new reference for everything nightmare mode like hey you gotta yeah. do this thing really how's it gonna be yeah. it's nightmare mode hey d what's up man are you having a good day nightmare mode nightmare. Oh, okay well uh, Whoa, yeah, yeah. <laughs> night, night, yeah hey man how's your day today nightmare mode <laughs> playing nightmare mode today yeah, yeah. So um, the goal of the channel here is fitness advice for real people, not the typical fitness channel. Um, and this is for Bearded Iron. And the uh, question is, um, says, afternoon, gents. Good job as always. 90% of my videos are talking head, educational stuff. I keep trying to throw in relevant B-roll and zoom in and zoom out, et cetera, but I still feel I'm struggling to keep people engaged. Any advice on keeping people interested when doing talking head content? My videos are around five minutes long, and I typically get about 50% retention, which isn't great. So um, when it comes to talking head content, you know, one thing that can be extremely um, beneficial is is, you know, telling stories through your content and just the way that you're structuring your videos as well, taking people through very specific things. Like, for example, like list videos is a great way to, um, you know, to pull people through content because they're waiting to see what that number one spot is and, you know, things like that. So those types of things are also helpful. Um, but at the end of the day, like, um, like we mentioned before, like somebody's not coming to the channel to watch the B-roll. The B-roll is there to just kind of help illustrate the idea to give them something else to look at instead of, you know, looking at you the whole time. But keep in mind that, you know, if you, if you, um, uh, communicate in an engaging way and you are, um, you know, good at storytelling, you can, in some cases, you can pull people through your content without having any B-roll at all with you just sitting there talking to them. Um, a really good example of this is, I'm not sure if he's doing it anymore because I haven't watched him in a while, um, but I used to really get into a YouTube channel called Project Life Mastery. And one of the things that he was exceptional at was he could, he could put out like a 20 minute video and it's like one take or maybe like two takes or whatever, but he's just, he, he's such a good person presenter that you could just sit there and watch him talk. And of course he would zoom in and, you know, zoom out and stuff like that from time to time. But almost all of it is just like one shot, one take, nothing really moving except for like his hands. And maybe, you know, he might move his body a little bit. Um, but he was such a good or is such a good presenter that, um, that, you know, it's like inspirational <laughs> in terms of, you know, um, how he, you know, um, presents his content, but really easy to watch based on how he actually, you know, structures it and actually, you know, uh, uh, delivers the information that he has. So I recommend you check out Project Life Mastery. Um, another really good example in this space, in the YouTube help space, is um, Ed over at Film Booth. Um, you know, he does essentially talking head content, but he does it in a different kind of way to where, I mean, he's not just like sitting there talking in some of his videos he is, and then he uses, he just creates the videos for all the supporting things that, you know, that he's, um, you know, talking about. But, you know, through his storytelling, you know, that's the thing that one, it helps him stand out, but two, it, it keeps people engaged, keep, keeps people watching and keeps people coming back um, at scale, which is, um, which is fantastic. So I would definitely check him out um, as well but check out yeah check out um over at project right life mastery and check out um check out ed over at film booth um next up um also keep in mind one one elephant in the room that i forgot to mention also keep in mind that when it comes to your audience retention and this is for all of us when it comes to your audience retention your thumbnail and title and how you're you know the promise that you have for people coming into your content so like when they see your videos showing up on like their home page their expectation when they come into that piece of content is going to help 
dictate how they're going to respond to the video or how long they're going to watch to the, vi the video based on their expectations. So you also want to make sure that how you're packaging up your content, that it's being, you know, authentic to what it is that they're going to get in the video. But in addition to that, make sure that you're just thinking like, okay, um, and this is why it's so important to make sure that you are considering making your thumbnails and titles before you even make your video, um, if you can. And the reason for that is because when you can think through, when you when you do it that way, you're making your thumbnail and title first, and then you can think to yourself, okay, if this is how I'm packaging this up, this is what people would expect to get when they click on this. So because of that, when I first start my video, then I'm gonna start it you know, in this way that would support what they would be expecting, and then I'm gonna start delivering on that expectation from you know as soon as they come into the video. And by doing those types of things, it can also help people watch your videos for a longer period of time because you're giving them exactly what they expected when they clicked on your video. So pro tip for everybody here um, is make sure that you are um, considering I know in some cases it's a little bit more difficult you know depending on you know the different types of content out there but um, um, if you can think of at least an idea for your thumbnail and for your title so you can make sure that you are you know able to, to, to match that expectation um, another thing as well is like in the case like here like Florida boy taste is what about for prank channels so prank channels are the same exact way so what you'd want to do there is you'd want to do it um, the same thing but instead of making the thumbnail, you'd want to come up with an idea for the thumbnail. And then while you're out making your prank video, you can make sure because you've already put together a few different ideas because you always want to have, you know, thumbnails on standby. But, um, but you've already come up with a few different ideas that you're going to use for your thumbnail. And then when you go out to actually do your pranks, you can ensure that you get the right photos or the right, you know, video that you can screenshot, um, that you get the shots that you need in order to make the epic thumbnail that you, you know, that you, that you came up with. Um, so even with prank channels, you know, that same idea, you know, still comes um, or still works. So next up, um, we've got Bella's uh, Bella Sin Gamester. They have a farming simulator Let's Play channel. The goal of the channel is to entertain people and put a smile on their faces because a smile makes the world a better place. Indeed, it does. And the question is, um, when the channel is one year old, I did a language pivot from Dutch to English. And because of that, I have a lot of Dutch dead subscribers because they don't watch my English content. Um, I've been doing this for five months now, but no improvement in views. Is it better to start a new channel? Um, if it was me and I had an entire channel in another language and then I was going to start and, and there's like a bunch of content on there that's still bringing in some of those Dutch viewers, um, then in that case, uh, if it was me, I would just start a brand new channel and have everything on it English from scratch um, instead of pivoting. If that was me, that's what I would do. Um, in terms of you, um, I mean, you've been going for five months, so you know you haven't been going for too long, so I'm not sure how many videos that you have. Um, but if it was me, yeah, I, I would I would keep the Dutch channel and I would just keep all the stuff that's Dutch on there so that they can, you know, be still, you know, come in. And interact with that channel, but I would start a different channel for English if it was me. Next up, um, Bill Seaback, I think is how you say that, says that they upload every other day. They've been on YouTube for less than six months. They do career advice, uh, recruitment. The goal of the channel is to help people advance their careers, also recruit people for various jobs. Um, the question is, um, I'm a little confused. Can I repost someone else's video without worry or do I need to always get permission? You don't wanna repost other people's videos. So the only way that you want to repost other people's videos is if you're using the remix feature um, inside of YouTube and you're doing it that way. Um, that's the way that you want to do that. Um, when it comes to, uh, uh, posting, you know, other people's videos. If you have to take someone's video and then post it, then you're then you're just copying. You know, you're 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 you're, you're infringing on their copyright um, for that video. So you do not want to download other people's videos and just repost their videos. There are things that you can do where you are doing um, like reaction videos for those types of things. As long as you're legitimately reacting to it and you are transforming that content in some way, then in that particular case, there's something called fair use that I recommend that you look into. Um, that can you know that can kind of help you know help you be able to do those sorts of things but you have to make sure that you're super confident that you're doing it the right way because if not um, you can end yourself up you know in, in hot water you know as it relates to copyright and copyright is a you know there's copyright laws <laughs> and because of that you, know, you have to make sure that you are uh, compliant um, let's see here. Next up, we got behind the videos. Behind the videos says they um, the type of channel is stories of YouTubers. The goal of the channel is to be able to make a living off of YouTube. Um, and the question is, 
How can my type of channel get good retention? I feel people get bored of a YouTuber story or the things that I'm talking about sometimes. My um, average view duration ranges from 20 to 35%. Um, I'm not sure how long your videos are, so that 25 to 30, or that 20 to 35% doesn't really um, translate well. Um, but when it comes to getting good retention, it's gonna come down to your ability to tell stories, specifically with that type of content. It's gonna come down to your storytelling skills is what that's gonna come down to in your, in your particular case. Um, and also, you know, the packaging, thumbnail title, that's gonna matter too. But like the you know the real thing there um it's gonna it's gonna come down to your storytelling um next up we've got everything with nurse sandy here give me one second Um, so we have everything with Nurse Sandy. Um, everything with Nurse Sandy says that they do fashion, travel, and lifestyle content. Um, it was previously about sharing relocation tips for international job applicants. Um, the goal is to get more engagement and watch hours to enable monetization and also to build a community. And the question is, um, I I used to share I used to share relocate relocation tips and job vacancies for international applicants um, seeking to relocate abroad. But I've recently changed my niche totally. It's cost me to lose subscribers and engagement and views. My question is, do I need to start up a new channel entirely or do you think uh, this channel can still thrive in the future? So when it comes to, uh, you know, doing like a full pivot like that, you can pull it off. Um, but, you know, one thing that you have to think about is like, okay, why am I trying to pivot instead of just starting a new channel in the first place? Um, so like I see here, I'm looking at your channel. I see you got like, you know, 2,500 subscribers on your channel. And that's probably why you're like, okay, maybe I'm gonna just, you know, keep rolling on this channel. Um, you can, but um, if you already have people that are, hold on, that are, you know, unsubscribing, you know, like all that stuff, then in that particular case, you know, you already know that with that new content that you're putting out that your current base isn't responding to it. So you're going to have to either tough that out and go through that process, you know, while you're pivoting the channel and just say, okay, some of these people aren't going to respond to these videos. Some of these people aren't going to uh, continue being subscribers. And I'm okay with that because I'm the one making the content. And since I'm the one making the content, if I want to take the channel in this direction, that's the direction that I'm going to take this channel. Um, but the thing that I do encourage you to do um, as you're doing that process is just get crystal, crystal clear. Oh, it is. The camera's off. Okay, hold on one second. Yep. No, like everything. Like, uh, yeah, it's not coming through. Thanks, Chantel. Give me one second here, guys. I'm going to play a uh, music video for you while we're getting this uh, tech worked out. Getting my fix in my kitchen, but look at the logo, the plug for the show. Whoa. It don't matter the flavor, I'm gonna get haters. A cup of a pot of the gold, I just need you to hold for a little bit longer. This song ain't a joke, it's a banger, you know where you don't. You will hang or you won't, but this thing isn't stopping till it's at the top. And I go back upstairs, man, I hope I don't drop it, I know that it's hot. It might seem one's enough, but apparently not. Take a cinnamon shot, mix it up on the spot. Give it a try, you might like it a lot. Need to hit the coffee maker, get another cup. Fiendin' for caffeine, I need it in my mug. I need to hit the coffee maker, get another cup. Fiendin' for caffeine, I need it in my mug. I need to hit the coffee maker, get another cup. Fiendin' for caffeine, I need it in my mug. I need to hit the coffee maker, get another cup. Fiendin' for caffeine. Put your mugs up here, put your cups up here, put your tumblers up here, now drink it, drink it, cheers. Put your cups up here, put your mugs up here, put your tumblers up here, now drink it, drink it, drink it. All right, there we go. 
So, uh, so we got it all turned back on. So when I reached over, um, cause he had to step away for a second. So when, uh, when I reached over to hit the record button on the ATEM, um, I actually hit the wrong button and it blacked everything out. So, uh, so it was me that did that. Uh, the, 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 the tech issue, uh, tech issue there. <laughs> so, uh, let's see here. So, uh, yeah, this is not a, that's not a creator mix track. Um, yeah, we, we have free music for content creators, but that's not one of them. That's just my personal, you know, thing that I use here, uh, for these be right back stream or that that's basically my be right back video or, uh, screen is what that is. <laughs> we have another one too. I've got another one here with Brian G. Johnson. Um, that's also super fun. Um, I'll, I'll play that one, um, you know, again, sometime soon, uh, as well, but anyway, um, back on track here. So the, uh, next channel is dusty fingers, RC. Um, they upload when they have time. The type of channel is vintage RC cars, tips, action videos, and builds. The goal of the channel is to share a hobby while getting some money back for my time. And the question is, I just started adding affiliate links and getting thousands of clicks, but only one sale so far. Um, I wanted to make a shop front on Amazon, but it wouldn't give me the option when I followed the process. Is that because I first need to make three sales? I just want to make the viewer experience better with an organized storefront. Any advice on things that I'm not aware of would be great. Um, great seeing the bros on screen again today. Just don't bring up the uh, play button incident. Um, LOL, PS, thanks for creator mix, salute. So um, when it comes to Amazon, First, glad that you are enjoying uh, Crater Mix. But when it comes to uh, Amazon, um, I'm not exactly sure um, uh, if I'm not exactly sure when they give you the storefront. So the storefront um, is not part of the affiliate program. It's part of the influencer program. So you have to make sure that you're signing up for the influencer program and not just the affiliate program because those are two different things. So once you're in the influencer program, it's going to be connected with your account. And then once it's connected with your account, then, you know, you can still do everything within your same Amazon account. Um, but they are two different, you know, two different areas. So, um, because of that, um, you just need to go look for the Amazon affiliate or influencer program. And then once you get all of that set up, then you'll have that, you know, that clean storefront. But before you do that, um, I do recommend that you do get the, you know, required, you know, three sales, um, so that, you know, when they do go to review everything or whatever, they can see like, okay, he's already sending sales, you know, or they are already sending sales, that type of thing so that uh you know you'll increase your likelihood of actually getting that so i'd tough it out just a little bit for right now so that you can increase your likelihood of getting in there um shortly unless you already have like a substantial following if you have like a good following already let's say like you know three thousand subscribers or five thousand subscribers or something then reaching out to them um already through their influencer program um is the way that you would get that uh storefront in that case um, and let's see here. You say, I just want to make the viewer experience better and advice and things. Aware of. Um, also in terms of advice of things that you might not be aware of. And the reason I'm saying this is because anytime we do the channel review streams over on the tube spanner, uh, YouTube channel, when we do those, um, one thing that I commonly see is people are using Amazon affiliate links, but they don't have any type of affiliate disclaimer, but which is um, against what the FTC requires, but they especially don't have the Amazon affiliate disclaimer. So Amazon has very specific language that you need to make sure that you're adding to the descriptions that have Amazon links. So just make sure that you have those, um, you know, where, where they're needed. And hey, just a reminder, because I um, I haven't mentioned it yet, and I just want to remind everybody, just in case you're not familiar with this. So um, for those of you that are using TubeSpanner, remember to you know go ahead and get your notepads out. I forgot to say that earlier. Um, if you're not using TubeSpanner, TubeSpanner is a workflow tool for content creators, um, and it's different than all the other tools. Most of them, most of the other tools are about like you know testing your thumbnails and optimizing your videos for like search. Um, when it comes to TubeSpanner, it fills in the holes that the other things don't offer. So for example, you can share your content directly to the social platforms without even having to leave YouTube through their browser extension. Um, you can, they have an upload assistant that helps you upload more efficiently and you can actually pick your videos from a drop down to, you know, to insert into your video descriptions. You can add little smart tokens like affiliate disclaimers. That's why I thought of it like affiliate disclaimers and anything else that you wanted to put where you just click it and then it'll just put it in there for you. Um, all kinds of really helpful things, including AI tools, like an AI script writer and AI title generator, things like that that can help you there. Um, so if you're not familiar with that yet or not already a user, you should be. And you can try that out at um, at tubespanner.com. I just wanted to make sure that I uh, that I mentioned that I mentioned that. So, next up on our list here, we've got. Uh, make sure I didn't. Okay, we got Dusty Fingers. Okay, we did Dusty Fingers already. So then, next one is one dollar American. 
one dollar at a time says uh the type of channel is money the goal of the channel is teaching how much um some bills are worth and the question is i have less than four months with my youtube channel i have 451 subscribers is that a good pace absolutely so um every youtube channel grows at a different pace um there isn't like a standard in terms of like okay if you start your channel today by this time next year you should have x amount of subscribers that metric doesn't exist um and the reason it doesn't exist is because there's so many different content creators on the platform offering so many different types of values and they are all you know putting their videos together in different ways um everybody comes in with different you know um understandings of how youtube works and different understandings of what a good video is and what a good thumbnail and a good title is things like that so because of that you know you have all of these kind of moving parts or all these different variables and all those different variables cause you know channels to grow you know at different paces there's going to be somebody um, that has started a youtube channel this week that probably by the end of this month they'll have you know 50,000 subscribers on a youtube channel or more there's going to be another person that started their channel on that same exact day that might take them you know four years to get to that same 50,000 subscribers so you know the the difference can be wild so because of that the things that you want to focus on is understanding how youtube works understanding how the audience that you're trying to reach thinks and the things that they care about and also um, learning the skills required to make good content for them and to give them a good experience and keep in mind that doesn't mean that everything has to be like super professional or anything like that it just means you need to figure out what your audience responds to and then just make that type of content um, for them and do the things that cause them to enjoy uh, your content but you're doing great so just as a, just as a context for me when I first started my um, my YouTube channel, and my my path on YouTube is kind of like this. But when I first started my YouTube channel, um, it took me five months to get my first 150 subscribers on my YouTube channel. So you're crushing me. Um, so because of that, you know you're doing you're doing awesome. Keep in mind we didn't have the same information out there that you have now and all that. We had some we did have some good information though. Um, but uh, you know it took me uh, took me a while to get going, and I even came onto YouTube with a bunch of skills that are really helpful for doing this type of thing. Um, and it still took me a while to get going. Roberto says, yeah, there's no standard um, growth metric, but if you do want to generalize it, um, it's close to 100,000 views, not shorts, to get 1,000 subscribers, 10 million views to get 10,000 subscribers, roughly 1% rule. Next up, we've got, um, actually pin that there so people can see it. Um, next up, we've got uh, our busy Aussie family. The one that shouted out Australia earlier when we were talking about heading over there. <laughs> uh, the type of channel is a family vlogging channel. Um, the goal of the channel is for entertainment and to have fun with the kids. And the question is, I was monetized earlier this month. Yay. And um, I've just recently added to uh, added the join button. What is the best way to get our channel out to these for people to see and want to join our membership? Um, mention it in your videos. Make sure you put it in your video descriptions and make sure that you have something to offer. So the thing that you offer could be exclusive content. Um, the thing that you offer could be, you know, access to you. Um, the thing that you offer could be, you know, that they get to come to meetups and things like that, or that you have things that, you know, there's all kinds of different things you could offer. Um, so just figure out, you know, what would make sense for the people that are watching your videos in terms of what, you know, you can offer them. Um, with your type of channel, since it's vlogging, then in that case, I would say like, you know, exclusive content for them um, would be the thing for that to where, you know, you have additional content that you make and you only make it available for channel members. That could be a video a month. It could be a video every two weeks. It could be a video every week. It could be daily videos. Like, I don't know, you know, how aggressive you want to be, um, but, you know, it's just adding additional content locked under the members um, access to where, you know, they can only get it if they're a member. Next, we've got uh, Market Maven. Market Maven says they upload one time per week or more. Um, the type of channel is a finance channel. The goal of the channel is affiliate commissions to a product that I use. And the question is, my channel is in the finance niche. Revenue comes from affiliate links. How do I get more clicks to my links? How do I increase returning viewers? Great question. So you increase returning viewers. I'm going to start there because the affiliate links I'm going to talk about for a while if you want to hit record D. So, um, oh, you oh. just shut the machine off. Wow. Whoa. What, what just happened there? Oh, now we went into like program mode. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you touched it this time instead yeah. of me. So yeah, I'm not sure what's going on there. The ATEM's just like blinking on and off. Wow. Yeah, now we're in it's, program it's mode. An it's an ATEM issue. Yeah. The ATEM is going uh Yeah, so, so, I didn't, so hit the record. It's it's that's the, what uh, I did. the green button. I think you hit the the other mode over there. Nope, the the one on top of that. That's the one that did everything. Hit it. See what happens. That's why there we go. everything crazy before. Interesting. 
Yeah. Yeah, it's okay now. So we have we have an A10 mini. <laughs> so okay, so wow. um, when it comes to getting people to return to your YouTube channel, that's all going to come down to the value that they get. So you know, for example, since you are helping people, um, you know, with finance. Then in that particular case, the people that watch your videos and they're like, oh, yeah, that, that, this was totally helpful. Um, those people are going to end up subscribing and coming back to the channel or they'll just come back to the channel when YouTube recommends their content. If you talk about something that they want, which is the next part of bringing people back to the channel, you have to make sure that the content that you are putting out makes sense for people to come back and, you know, and watch more. So when you're planning out your content, the best thing you can do is look over the next like 90 days or so. I mean, you can get real granular with this and go out over the next like year um, or real aggressive with this and go out over the next year. But if you just go over the next like 90 days and you say, okay, um, over these next 90 days, I'm going to, you know, publish these videos. How much sense does it make for somebody to watch this video and then watch this video and then watch this video? And is there any way that I can move these video ideas around to where it creates a better, you know, journey for people in terms of experiencing a piece of content, getting recommended a newer video, coming in and watching that, getting recommended the next newer video, coming in and watching that and so on. So you give people that reason to come back and, you know, respond to the content based on the things that they care about, right? So just planning your content out that way and thinking of how people are going to, you know, come back for those additional videos um, is definitely helpful for that. Um, in addition to that, let's talk about the affiliate side. So when it comes to getting more people to click on your YouTube affiliate links, um, there's a few different things you can do. The very first is making sure that your YouTube channel is set up to expose those links to people. So for example, um, if you have video descriptions, make sure that you have those affiliate links in your video descriptions. You can level it up by moving them up above the see more in your video descriptions. And when you do that, then it's going to make it more visible for desktop users. Um, so then, you know, you can get more clicks that way from them. Um, you also have, when it comes to affiliate marketing, you have the more aggressive route and then you have the passive route or the more active route and the more passive route. So when you are putting out videos for the sake of affiliate income, then in that particular case, it's going to start at the topic. So if you are wanting to be active, you know, on the promoting the affiliate or a little bit more aggressive, then in that particular case, you're making videos about the product. You're making videos that people would be looking for in YouTube search and you would basically jump in the middle of that buying decision. And then when it comes to, uh, you know, everything else, like with all the other content that you're doing, then in that particular case, you can go the more passive route, which is just putting links down in your video description and then people that want to find it can. Um, but you can start, um, you know, being more active there by letting people know that you have those links available, you know, taking a moment in each one of your videos to mention that particular product um, or, you know, other things that you promote. But you just take a moment in your video to mention that thing and then you tell them like, oh, well, there's more, you know, information about that down in the description but anyway and then you keep on with the video um, so when you do those types of things then it just brings to people's awareness that you have those things available and then they know to go and look down in your description so by default there's going to be people that are going to go and look in your description anyway even without you prompting them to do so However, when you are letting them know that you have things available that can, you know, help them or assist them or that would just be, you know, interesting to them in some way, then what you're doing is you're spreading awareness about those links and you're going to cause some people that would not just naturally look in the video description to go, oh, I, I want to see more about that. And then they'll go down to your video description and they will, you know, click on those links to, you know, explore whatever it is that you are promoting. So those are some things that you want to make sure that you're doing. But, um, but the, the, the topic and thinking about, you know, the viewer intent um, is also, you know, really important. So for example, if you have a very specific product that you're promoting, which it looks like you do, um, then in that case, just letting people, you know, or not letting people know, but in that particular case, making sure that you're making content that has a high um, viewer intent in terms of their, you know, possibility of purchasing that product. So for example, like review videos and things like that, even list videos are good for those types of things. Like, you know, the best finance tools for X, Y, Z. Then when somebody's trying to solve that problem, you're jumping right in the middle of that problem saying, hey, I've got these tools that'll help you out, or I've got these things that'll help you out. And then when you're spreading the awareness, they're going, oh, that's exactly what I need. And they go down to your video description and they click that link and then they go get the thing. Um, so that's what you want to think about when it comes to uh, affiliate marketing on YouTube. Next up, we've got, um, let's see here. Got another super chat. Um, super chat. Science-based fitness. Oh, my supers aren't loading in uh, Streamsy. Hold on. Um, Science-based. Oh, they're there. Got, got it. Okay. Yep, got them. Okay. 
So um, Science Based Fitness says, um, hey, and hey, Doug, I'm not sure if you're um, in here or not, but um, but that's working again, by the way. Um, so let's see here. So Science Based Fitness says, um, hey, Super Newman Bros, I <laughs> hope you guys are well. Question, will D be in the next rap song you drop? I don't know, D. I don't rap. Do you got bars? You guys, you can, you got bars in there somewhere. Maybe you can like just be there playing a bass or something. He doesn't doom, doom, rap. Doom. Maybe you can add to the instrumental. Maybe. Uh, D doesn't rap. But you can add to the instrumental. You don't have to rap. You can add to the instrumental. I'm like the Shook D Knight just sitting in rap. a chair going, do, 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 Yep. I'll hang just a off. quick cut for that. And then, you know, back to, you know, me being a, 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 a moron, right? With my, uh, <laughs> with, uh, you know, with mine. Glad you said it. Yeah, he, he doesn't Somebody drop, has to. D yeah. doesn't drop bars. <laughs> next up, we've got Market Maven. Uh, I think I did Market Maven already. Yeah, I did. Okay. Yeah. So um, let's see here. So next up. We've got uh, Ghosts of Britain. Ghost of Britain says they do paranormal content. The goal of the channel is to share my ghost hunts. The question is, I would love for you to take a look at my channel and tell me your first impressions. Um, we don't do that during the stream, so I recommend that you subscribe to the Tube Spanner YouTube channel um, because we do uh, channel review streams over on that channel. Next, we've got um, iFun Chris. iFun Chris does comedy and mix content. Um, no goal for the channel. The question is, um, podcast works for my news. Um, yeah, podcasts can be good for uh, you know for getting news out. Um, you know, just like videos can. Um, but typically, in like a podcast format, you'd want to make those you know a little bit longer than you would you know just like a regular YouTube video. Um, but yeah, absolutely, podcasts can be used um, you know for that. But you would just basically make just like a news based podcast based around the type of content that you make. Good question. Next up, we have Sincerely Tracy. Sincerely Tracy does um, recaps, reviews, TV shows, movies, and news. The goal of the channel is to entertain and give information. And the question is, I resurrected a dead channel. I used to predominantly review a certain TV show, but whenever I try to introduce anything new to recap, it gets no interest. My views haven't been the same. What can I do to change this? Yeah, this is one of those things that I was talking about earlier in terms of like pigeonholing yourself into like a specific game or a specific show in your case is like when you do try to pivot out of that, in some cases there can be like growing pains to where it's like, okay, well, I'm trying to go this way, but you know, the only thing people are responding to is when I publish content about this because YouTube already understands that this is, you know, the audience that typically responds to my content. So they're showing my stuff to them and they don't respond. So because of that, start publishing content in the new direction that you're wanting to go. And instead of looking at the immediate video performance, start checking back in like 28 days later, um, you know, 90 days later and see how those, um, see how those videos are doing then instead of, you know, leaning on the exact moment, you know, or those, you know, first day that you publish, for example. But, um, but at the end, of the day you know if you are going into a different direction just remember that you know people did subscribe to your youtube channel for the one thing so when you are giving them something different you can't expect them to respond well to that content because it's not what they you know it's not what they signed up for got another super chat demon bro thank chat. you for your super chat it says nick your advice on youtube shorts um should i slow down i feel like it's hurting long form um what do you think so um shorts and long form um th there are two different things they show in two different you know feeds all that good stuff technically um you can even upload a youtube short on the same day that you publish a video and um and it doesn't impact the long form video so because of that if you are you know if you're like hey you know i'm doing i'm doing shorts and people are responding to them then in that case Case, continue to do shorts along with your long form. Um, but if you find that people are not responding to your long form, then that's where you go in and you start trying to figure out why they're not responding and you, sh and you start trying to fix it. So if you're like, okay, um, if they are not responding to my long form content, are they not clicking? You know, are they not, uh, you know, are, once they do click, are they not watching the videos for a longer period of time? They're getting if, great views on some of their shorts. Are they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. good, good, good. Yeah, so if, if people are responding well to your shorts, um, then in that particular case, um, definitely, you know, keep doing those. Um, are they also in alignment with what they're doing with the long form content? Yeah, it's all the same stuff. It looks like okay. they're taking clips out of their long form videos and putting them into shorts. Okay. That's what it looks like at a glance here. Yeah, so then in that case, um, I would just go in and, and start looking at your analytics on what's happening with your long form content and start seeing, you know, what it is that you need to start working on there. Because, you know, the whole thing with our analytics is it, you know, is our reflection of how people are responding to our content and you know we want that high response so because of that when you go into your analytics you can start looking of course you got to keep impressions in mind with all this but you want to start looking to see you know how often are people clicking on what it is that i'm doing how often are people coming back to the channel how often are or how long do people typically watch these videos when they come in how often are people completing the videos those types of things um in order to you know ensure that people are also having a good experience on the long side um but 
as time progresses, you know, YouTube is doing more and more to, you know, to serve, you know, content back and forth um, as well to the different audiences. So, you know, keep that in mind as well. Like if you're crushing it on shorts, think of shorts is kind of like, okay, um, this is just my way to reach the people that are in the short shelf, but I need to kind of roll up my sleeves and try to, you know, do, um, you know, do a little bit better here on the long form content when I'm putting that together so that I can get a better response. Great question. Um, next on the list here, D, we've got Universal Healings. They do Reiki content. The goal is to help people, um, to help provide people the best free themed distant Reiki sessions for all aspects of life. And the question is, what's the secret to getting attached to content you're creating? Or how do you know you can tell if you're getting attached to a video while creating? What signs do you notice yourself as a content creator? I don't get attached to videos. Um, I think that having a personal attachment to your video content is a straight line to misery. And the reason that I think that is because when you are getting emotionally attached to your content and then you're putting it out there, you're putting a lot of your personal um, energy and a lot, you, basically you're connecting that video to yourself. And if people don't respond well to that video, it can make you kind of feel bad yourself because you've kind of, you know, put your all into that video and you've become know, emotionally attached. They said, what's the secret to not getting attached? Oh, that's, just that's, that's what I meant. Look at your videos they as said. a product that you're putting out. Right. So like, for example, if you had a job and you were making iPhones, then in that case, you would just make iPhones and you'd put them out. Right. Um, you wouldn't be like, oh, this iPhone right here. You know, like I put Fox my Con heart and soul. Shout out. How you doing, Foxconn? <laughs> I put my heart and soul into this <laughs> iPhone and then now I'm going to, you know, put it out there and I hope, you know, people, you know, like enjoy it. I mean, you always want to hope people enjoy it. And you want to make the best content that you can. But just just make sure that you remember that your your content is not you and your content is also not a not a reflection of you you it's something that you just make and you put out there so like when when you get attached to your own content, you can enjoy your own content but when you get attached to it um it starts You're meaning yourself up for failure yeah, with yeah. That, and like. it, it starts meaning like a lot more and you're you're kind of hoping that people you know um you know connect to it in the same way but if you just look at it like okay this is a product that i'm making um every video is a product or, or a soldier is the way that i look at them so it's like hey this is a soldier that's going out there and it's you know getting me in front of people and it's adding value to people and all that stuff it's out there working for me on my behalf right so because of that i can make something i can get it out there and then like you know that's it you know, like maybe I might run across that video in the future, but it's like, hey, I made it. I'm getting it out there for other people. This isn't even for me in the first place, right? So if, I, if it was just for me, I would just make it and keep it on my computer. <laughs> but since you're putting it out there for other people, just be like, hey, I'm making it for them. So I'm going to not get attached to this at all. And I'm just going to, you know, make it the best that I can for my viewers. And I'm going to, you know, this is my thing that I'm giving to them um, and, and take that approach with it. And that might help you with the, uh, you know, getting it, getting attached to the content. Realistically, though, I mean, not getting attached is one thing, but it's very disappointing when you do make something, whatever that is, and people don't respond totally. to it in a yeah. positive way. Mm -hmm. Like you, because we spend a lot of time putting stuff together. Whatever it is that you're making, you put a lot of time and effort into it. You research, you make it, whatever. We all do a lot of It's things. like going to the gym for a month and stepping on the scale and like nothing happened. Or you like well, gained I, a few pounds. Even yeah. then, I mean, you can still go to the gym for years and have, the, have it dialed up and you could be ripped and have, you know, be shredded and then like you know, things still don't work out for you sometimes. Like how many times you, but if you're going to the gym to get fit, that'd be pretty worked out though. How long you been on YouTube? <laughs> uh, almost nine, nine years in October or okay. September. My point is how many times have you uploaded a video in that nine, even now, just say the past mm -hmm. year, how many times you uploaded a video going, this one's probably going to do well. And it doesn't do well. Like you think uh, a like decent amount. De yeah, that, decent that's my amount. point. Yeah, that's my point. Like you can still put in the reps and totally. still swing and miss. Mm -hmm. totally. So yeah, I mean, you're going but when that happens though, I look at it like it's already out there. Right. Like, but so it's like, okay, point. well, you know, like it's not doing as well as I can. So whatever, I'll just make another one and I'll check back in on it. That's my because, whole point. Like is, at the, you know, from that experience, no, like getting super attached to it at the beginning. We're actually talking about this today, getting super attached to it at the beginning. Um, I already know that that's a thing for, you know, failure or not getting attached, but like caring so much at the beginning. Um, like I typically look more at like, you know, 30 and 90 days than I do look at, you know, when it first publishes, but I do like to see it climbing through the ranks. Right. Well, yeah. that's my entire point is we spend a lot of time making whatever it is we're making on YouTube or whatever platform we put it out there. And we do get disappointed if it doesn't do what we think it's going to do or what we think it should do. But those disappointments are going to come no matter what. So it, it 
not getting attached is the best way but because that disappointment's going to come no matter what right if you swing and you miss you're going to be like oh man i did all that work i thought it was going to do well and you know and maybe you just blew it at the hook right maybe everything else was spot on but your first 30 seconds is terrible or maybe the, the title maybe you're like you know hey Title's this wrong, is a great yeah. title but then it you happens. look at it like a month later and you're like yeah that's not a that's not a good title i could have done yeah. way better yeah. like for example in my news yesterday right yeah. I was on the fence because you know how they have the whole like you know Google's deleting accounts. Which, by the way, just to be clear, Google's not deleting accounts that have uh, you know YouTube videos attached to them. But since Google's deleting accounts, that would have been a great title for my news yesterday because people would have been like, "Oh, when what's does, going on?" They don't know about that. When does that start, by the way? Um, I can't remember off the top of my head. But it's but, soon. Yeah. But like uh, with Google, you know, deleting accounts, you know, I was like, I should make the title about like Google's deleting accounts because people are like, oh my gosh, what's happening? I, I want to go in and like check on this. Yeah. Um, but instead, I was like, hey, let's just be transparent. You know, this is more about the, you know, 230 I'll, thing than I'll it is about, uh, than it is about that. Him. I would have baited him. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but it's not, it's not clickbait yeah. really because that's, some accounts are going to get Yeah, deleted. they are. Yeah, totally. Some totally. totally. It, just doesn't, it just doesn't apply to YouTube. So it would have been kind of like a bait and switch there um, in that particular case. Yeah. But, but I, uh, I, I've been disappointed a lot, like making content. Sure. You just, it's, it's part of the process. But but you just can't get attached to it, though. You just got to like, right. you just got to let it go. Right. Yeah, like, like it's yeah. just like, okay, well, I push that out. If people respond to it now, great. If they don't respond to it now, that's fine. Hopefully, it'll at least add value to some people over time. All you can do as a creator is make the best thing that you can make at the time and put it up there, and yeah. then the audience will decide if it's good or not. Mm -hmm. That's all you can really do. Yep. Um, let's see. Have you noticed shorts? Uh, super chat. Um, have you noticed uh, shorts, shorts people are more trolls? Um, I yeah, haven't noticed I have. that personally. I, I have. You have? Yeah, yeah I, I haven't have. noticed have. that um, personally. My guess would be there's probably a lot of younger people it, um, in, in YouTube shorts. Um, yeah. That might be why. Because yeah, um, you know, young people seem to be a little, a little bit more abrasive. Um, so, you know, I, that might be why. I look at shorts like fast food versus like long form content like eating a meal. Uh. Right? Like you're probably going mean, to, no shade if you're eating every meal at McDonald's, but you're probably going to encounter more issues at McDonald's with other people at McDonald's than you will sitting down at like, you know, Benihana uh, right. or something. Right. You know right. I mean? You don't see too many viral clips on the internet of people throwing chairs at Benihana. Oh, right. You know right. I mean? Not yet. We're Not getting yet. there, though. Right. We're getting there. But yeah. like, you know. Give it, give, it, give it a few more months. Right. But yeah. it's like video after video of people like jumping over the counter at McDonald's. Yeah. <laughs> like, right. <laughs> Uh, Lola says, uh, Lola is a vlog, says, uh, my question is, uh, Super Chat also, D says, um, can I make my existing YouTube videos into a short? Um, yes, you can sample out parts of your existing YouTube video and make it into a short. Just make sure that it would make sense for a short. So, for example, what you don't want to do is you don't want to just flood YouTube shorts with a bunch of, you know, just kind of, you know, things that don't really make a lot of sense or don't really add a lot of value, you know, to the short shelf. You want to think, okay, if somebody's sitting there watching YouTube shorts, um, will this particular video like grab their attention and pull them, you know, keep their attention for the duration of this clip? If the answer is yes, then it's probably, you know, a good thing to put there. But if it's like, hey, probably not, but I'm just putting this there so I can put some stuff in shorts, then in that case, you'd want to, you know, decline, um, you know, putting those things in shorts. Reviews with Mayo says you can commit no mistakes and still lose. That's totally. Not, that's totally. not a flaw. That's yeah. life. Yep. Yeah, that's the thing. Totally. Man. You can do everything by the book and just across the board, nailed it, nailed it, nailed it, nailed it. And for well, to an extent, like if you really nailed it, then then it would be fine. But if you it, like it doesn't do fine because you don't nail it. I don't know. Security Union is our next question. They do biweekly content. You don't they do programming content. The goal of the channel. What are you going to say? Let's talk about that for a second. Go. If you lack channel authority. This is going to get down to like semantics. I, I know. Yeah, I know, but that's gonna, the thing. Like, if you're semantics. brand new on the platform, you mm -hmm. may knock it out of the park. Van mm -hmm. Girl, what was her name? Yeah, Van Girl, I think. She knocked it out of the park. Mm -hmm. But I've come across a lot of new channels that for me, like I'm looking at it for and going, you. wow. Right. But for, for you. me, they ticked all the boxes. Yep, for you. Right. Yeah, but not at scale. Right. But I don't like right. Van Girl. Right. So. Right. 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 That's the thing. It happens. But not if you nail it. Like if you nail it, if you legitimately Who nail, do you it, nail it, for? If, if we use the, if we, you Who know, do you nail it for if they, if you legitimately nail it, then you would nail it for the audience that you're trying to reach. Yeah. If you, if you nail it, then you would, you know, then, then you can't like lose there. But if you think you know, nail man. it, but you don't, then I in don't that know, case, man. that's where you would lose. I don't know. I've, I've seen a lot of channels where they nail it for me. And I think to myself, what in the world is holding this channel back? And it's probably just time on the platform. It's probably just, they don't have that dialed in with the audience yet, but I watched the video and I was like, this is an amazing creator. It's just a matter of time before they pop. 
Travis says, I'm also clipping all these nail it for sound bites. <laughs> right? Oh, love I don't, it. Yeah, that's just my take on it. Like yeah. sometimes, I don't know, man. Yeah, Roberto says the possibility of losing isn't a reason not to play. Yeah. Totally, totally, totally. Yeah, Doug says it well. You can nail it but miss a connection. Yeah. Yeah. But then you wouldn't be nailing it. That's what I mean. Like, like I, I think it comes down to the definition know, of nailing it. Because Nail nailing it. it is doing all of the right things. You know what? Travis MCP agrees with me. So that's so the does end of, so does Demon Ro- uh, Demon Tro. And that's the end of the discussion. Yeah. Like <laughs> if Security, Roberto will agree with me, we'll just call it a wrap. <laughs> so, but Roberto, he, he can break it or make it. Come on, man. <laughs> Security <laughs> Union says they do biweekly content. Um, the goal, the type of channels programming. The goal of the channel is to help developers to build products and stop uh, lead coding. Um, and the question is, how important is the consistency slash branding of thumbnails? Um, should I use the same color palette, font, etc.? So branding can be extremely valuable um, on YouTube. However, you don't want to focus on branding so much that you take away from effectiveness. The very first thing that you should do, like when you're starting a YouTube channel or like, you know, when you're getting going, is like learn how to get a response first. That should be like goal number one is like, okay, how do I get people clicking on what it is that I'm making? Um, and And the reason for that is because if you focus on branding and the the whole thing is like, okay, well, I'm going to use this template um, because I think this is a good template, then in that case, you might be committing to something that isn't effective and that could stand in the way of you, you know, getting the results that you're after. So because of that, step number one is focus all of your efforts on like, okay, how do I, how do I connect with this viewer through the packaging and how do I pull them into it? And then from there, um, once you get really good at that, then you start thinking like, okay, um, so like go ahead and get your branding together for like your videos, you know, that kind of stuff. But when it comes to like your thumbnails first effective, and then once you get it effective, start thinking like, okay, these are the things that I figured out typically works for, you know, for the content that I'm putting out or works for my channel and the people that are, you know, responding to it. So now let me start, you know, adding just like some branding elements here and there, um, and start seeing, you know, if that makes an impact or not. And then you kind of continue down that road until, you know, you get everything, you know, looking the way that you want and also being effective. So, um, when it comes to that, you can also do just like very small things to where you have just like down on like the, like the little corner of your thumb nail over here you just have like a little angled thing and uh and then you have just like a little logo down there like you can do those sorts of things too but even with that i wouldn't even distract viewers with that like right away like i would make sure that you are just leaning 100 percent on like okay what's effective and how can i get people to respond to you know to what it is that i'm doing and then from there start thinking about the branding side um also like at scale, like when, you know, when you're getting a lot of views and stuff and you have a lot of people passing through your content, the branding can also be really helpful because then it helps people recognize not just that it's about that thing, but that it's yours. So for the people that, you know, enjoy your content, then, you know, for them, just with you being in the thumbnail might be the thing that's like, oh, hey, another video from D, I'm going to click on that. Um, and then they come in and they watch, you know, the video or participate in some way. So those types of things can be um, helpful, but first you got to make sure that you are getting people to click on what it is that you're doing so that, you know, so that everything else can happen from there. So work on effectiveness first over everything else. And then from there, um, and by effectiveness, I simply mean understanding your audience and learning how to get them to respond to, you know, what it is that you're doing, understanding who it is that you're going after and learning how to get them to respond to what it is that you're doing. Once you have that in place and you're consistent with it, that's where you can start, you know, messing around with like branding and things like that. So I looked her up because I always forget her name and apologies if she who? stumbles across who? this. Her name is Jelena Alina. Oh, Janelle, sorry, Janelle, Janelle, Janelle. Alina. For, this is incredible. 41 videos, 2.43 million subscribers. Nice. Nice. I'm surprised she did. She When's her last upload? Five months ago. Wow. That's incredible. Absolutely incredible. Five hasn't uploaded in five. Like, man, like talk man. about like a. Yeah. It's like momentum. lightning in a bottle. Li- yeah. Yeah. I hope she's okay. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. I mean, just knocked it out of the park, man. Yeah. Completely knocked it out of the park. Incredible. Next up, we've got anime drawing step by step. Um, anime drawing step by step does daily content. The type of channels art. The goal of the channels to earn money. The question is: It's been months um, or two. I've mon- uh, it's been months Seven or hours, two. Fourteen days since I've monetized my channel. Gosh, what is that from? Since you took my love away. Ah, oh, okay, got it. Um, Woke up. Yeah. yeah, I got it. Got it. Go. Yeah, I got it. So um, and it's I been. All day. <laughs> end up with a copyright strike like earlier in the day you're trying yeah. to get me a guideline right. strike now right. you're moving right. over you're like well that didn't work let's yeah. get him a copyright strike yeah. instead so um it's been months or two um sing since the I, audience just sing it because i can't do it since i, I want to do it please sing it 
since I've monetized my channel and it's really hard earnings, will the amount increase um, after? So the amount will increase when you start um, getting more, um, you know, when you start getting more views on your content. Um, so basically the things that, um, that matter when it comes to earning money from your YouTube channel is the topics of your videos, the people that are watching your videos in terms of, you know, the demographics of your videos, where are people watching from, you know, that type of thing, their age range, all that. Um, also, ad inventory. So if there's not, you know, a lot of, you know, ads to be put on videos, um, then in that particular case, you know, you're going to get less ads put on your videos. So that's also a thing that, um, that impacts that. But ads will increase um, as your channel, you know, keeps going as you get better, you know, uh, you know, um, as you not as you get better, but as you start getting, you know, more views on your videos, things like that, then you start making more um, ad revenue. Next up, we've got uh, Circle H Scuba says they do scuba education, gear reviews, and experiences. I love it. Uh, the goal is to become an authority for scuba diving enthusiasts and would-be enthusiasts. Good. Question, what tips do you have on recording specifically for shorts? I've only cut down long form um, or did a single clip with voiceover for shorts and instead want to do short specific recordings but feel out of my element. Tips on outline, setup, etc. when compared to long form. So um, the very first thing, if you're gonna just do it from scratch, is just thinking um, this one thing. This is just going to show up on somebody. So since this is just going to show up on somebody, then how can I um, how can I grab their attention right out of the gate? In some cases, that thing might be, you know, hey scuba divers or something yeah. like that, so that you're at least getting you know talking to that right person. But when you do that, the people that are not scuba divers are just going to be like next, right? Um, some of them might watch it, but um, but you know those types of things. If you're trying to target a very specific audience, you know, can be helpful. But at the end of the day, you know, you're just happening to people. They're not choosing to click on what it is that you're doing. So you have to be able to capture capture their attention um, as second, soon as it starts. So because flat, of that, yeah. spend a lot of planning time thinking of exactly what's going to happen as soon as your shorts, um, as, soon, as soon as your short starts. Yeah, I recommend spending time on YouTube shorts. And if you have TikTok, go into TikTok and just look at some of the top videos from mm. any niche and yeah. i'm not talking about like dancing things or challenges. yeah go, go and look at you know look at financial tips for example or so any sort of education or in your case scuba, go, go, scuba. go look up scuba go stuff. look at scuba look at the and highest performing videos for look at the yeah. highest performing videos Great and look tip. at how quickly they have a hook look at their the energy levels look at how they're framing the camera look at where they're putting captions on the screen pay attention to everything that they're doing with that video because if you start looking at the highest performing videos in those niches or, or your own, you're going to start to pick up patterns and then start to frame your videos around those and then see how your audience responds to them. Other things too, like, um, you know, you start your video, you're showing some dude swimming with a shark, like, hey, this guy's getting ready to try to touch this shark, yeah. right? So like in that particular case, it's not something to where you're like, you know, hey, I'm going to give you this like scuba yep. tip. It's like, hey, this guy's getting ready to touch this shark. Or it's like, oh, let's see what happens here, right? So then it creates there's that a tension. fantastic uh, clip. I haven't heard it on YouTube Shorts yet, but there's a, a sound bite on TikTok that people use. And they always use it right before something crazy happens. Like somebody's getting ready to do something, right? In just the first few seconds, like they set it up and you're like, oh, here it comes. And then they pause it. And then the audio clip goes, yep, that's me. And oh, yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking like about. It's from country yeah, sounding. Yeah. Like, yeah, People were using that a lot during the pandemic. Too. Yeah, 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 yeah that's me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, it's like something out of a TV show that would be back in like the 80s or something. How big is I the map? What's that. going on? I hope that you're, uh, I hope yep, you're doing awesome. That's me. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking yeah. about. I laugh every time I go across. The, uh, <laughs> that Junkman um, is our next channel here. They do old pop culture toys, music, um, and movies, and more. Sorry, um, old pop culture toys, movies, and more. The goal of the channel is for a um, view to leave a video saying, wow, I forgot about that. Nice. Mm -hmm. um, the question is, I've been going um, to older view. I'm going to go to all of their videos and be like, oh, wow, I forgot about that. Right. So it's like that. success on every right. video. Jackpot. Yeah. <laughs> Jackpot. Says I've been going to um, older views with hardly no views and re-uploading um, um, then with a classic video intro. At times, I'll fix some things I don't like. Does YouTube see that as a bad thing? So what you do not want to do is you do not want to download your old videos and re-upload those again. So instead, remake the video. Like if you're like, hey, I can make this way better now, you know, because I've been on YouTube for a while, you know, I understand, you know, you know, my viewers more and all that stuff. Um, remake the video um, and you'll just make a better version now um, instead of, you know, taking videos that you already have and, you know, cutting them up and, you know, all those things. You can do, you know, like compilation videos and things like that if you wanted to. Um, but, you know, just making a new fresh video with all the experience that you had um that would be you know the, the the direction that i would go in 
mashups is uh, is what I meant by the compilations. Um, you know, for example, like you know the you know the 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 ten you know most uh, you know forgot about uh, you know toys you know like those types of things. Um, reviews with Mayo is the next one. Um, they do movie, TV reviews, and retrospectives. Um, the goal is to entertain and, pro uh, and provoke thought through analysis of media. And the uh, question is, hey, Nick and D, it's Nigel. What's going on, Nigel? Hope hey, you're doing Nigel. awesome. How you doing, man? Hope you're doing great. Says, um, when I get comments that I don't like um, but aren't too offensive or require hiding or reporting or even bad words, but it still shows on the studio app page um, uh, till I heart it, which I don't love the comment. Um, I can even hit the thumbs up, and sometimes I don't. Uh, I really don't want to reply, as it could cause conflict. How do I keep such comments without compromising myself or the viewer? Mark is red would be nice. Yeah. So if you have a comment that um, it's not too offensive, or it doesn't require hiding. In that particular case, you don't have to even respond to it. Like if you're like, hey, um, like it doesn't have any of the stuff that I would typically delete this for, but it's not like uh, like a, you know, a comment that I would, you know, really like, then in that particular case, like I would just not, yeah, I would just not respond to it in any way. I would just not acknowledge the comment if it's something to where it's like, eh, you know, whatever, or just acknowledge, just give it a heart, you know, whatever. It, it's you're just saying that, hey, I noticed this, but maybe, you know, like it's not something that you're going to respond to. Um, but yeah, Marcus is red would be nice, but um, they, they do have that to where, you know, if you do, uh, you know, heart it, then in that particular case, it'll come out of that, you know, out of that queue. So because of that, I would just, you know, hit the heart button on it and just let it go, you know, from there, even though you don't actually like the comment, just hitting that heart just to get it out of that queue, you know, would be the thing um, instead of, uh, instead of, you know, you know, trying to hide it or, you know, anything like that. Next, we have uh, yeah. Kelly Copter. This is the video I love editor. That name. Yeah, I do too. This Kelly is the video Copter. editor from before. Right. They do um, edutainment content. The goal is to educate, entertain, and tell stories. The question: I just did my first live stream. Congratulations! Yeah. On your first live stream, says um, it went really well, and 270 showed up um, while live. Do you have any tips to make live streaming more dynamic and entertaining? I use Streamyard, by the way, and I love it. Having my first guest on this weekend. Um, so first off, congratulations to that turnout. That's fantastic. Um, two is when it comes to making live streamings uh, more dynamic and entertaining. Just don't things where you can interact with the um, audience is helpful like um, for example you know um, we used to in this stream we actually have it sitting over here um, we actually had like a spin wheel and we were doing like giveaways and those types of things we would do like channel reviews and that kind of stuff um, the the live stream that my brother D and Daniel do the channel review stream that's another one that's a really good one to check out in terms of just something that's super entertaining to watch you know in addition to that like when we're here we're just like we're, we're just talking just banter yeah we're just talking just and it's going back and forth talking. because because we're Doing bro stuff <laughs> because we're you know we're giving a different uh you know type of value here but if you check out um their stream um their channel review stream it's a great example of like a really you know dynamic stream they've got like all these different scenes in there they have you know these it, it's a game show like they've made it into a, a you know a virtual game show it's really cool so um so check that out but basically just trying to it's trying to find like ways game show it is a game I'm sorry show. it is a game show right. um, but basically trying to find ways that you can get viewers to you know engage is one thing so asking a lot of questions and things like that so for example when you have your guest on instead of just talking to the guest and ignoring the chat um, you know having it to where it's like oh hey you know when you see a good question come in or something like that being like oh hey such and such you know wants to know this and then you know that way the people watching know they're like oh they're they're pulling you know questions out of the comment section so now let me you know start interacting here um and you can also do that in other ways through the actual format of the show so you can have it to where it's like hey this is like the intro part and then we move into this and then we have this little you know uh like two minute segment to where we just answer you know comments quickly out of the chat then we move into you know something else that we're doing with this guest um and then we have another segment where we answer questions for two minutes or something like that just thinking of you know that format and just thinking about okay if somebody's watching with this like how you know how long do you think they would make it before they start getting bored and of course you'll be able to see that in your stats too but like how long would they make it and then start injecting things into those parts where you're like okay people are typically falling off here so let's throw in like a two minute q a session that would cause people to kind of lean in and start you know asking questions in the comments and then we'll lean back out talk more about whatever it is that we're talking about lean back in at that next point where people are leaving and you know do that you can also do this in real time by watching the view count on your videos as well so if you're like whoa we just lost like 30 people let's lean in hey by the way if you have any questions go ahead and drop them in the chat right now we're going to go through a quick lightning round and we're going to ask you know a few questions here to our guest and then you know and then just kind of rinse and repeat that as you go through based on what it is that you're seeing on the count
Yeah, pay attention to your view count as well. What? See? Did you do the record again? I just I just hit the the camera button. Huh? And it weird. Just went yeah, the ATEM is going nuts. How weird? It's probably the electric here. We should probably get that out no, of here. No, that's going through the power conditioner. Oh, okay. Yeah. I weird. think it has something to do when it's recording. Huh. There's something weird that's happening there. Interesting. All I did was change the camera and it went it went nuts. Huh. Yeah, that that yeah, the, the, huh. Interesting. Maybe there's a firmware update or something Maybe. we need to yeah, check. Possibly. What was I going to say? Yeah. Uh, Not sure. What's going to say? Oh yeah, uh, 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 live streaming. Keep an eye on your on your viewer count. You know how many people are watching. And if you notice that you're droning on for a really long time, you'll notice if it's not interesting, you'll notice that people will start to leave. I feel I'm under attack here. I'm calling you by out. Droning out. By droning on for a no, long time. No, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> Don't worry about that too much with just a single live stream. But you can go in and you can look at your live stream and see where people are falling off. And you can look, look at your live streams collectively to see if you can find patterns. Okay, if I go on too long about this or that, people start to lose interest. Use your data to help guide you. And another fun thing that you can do, and we don't really do this intentionally, but your audience, if they're coming back over and over, they'll start to pick up on things that you find entertaining. Like we might talk about crazy things like, I don't know, my play button, for example. Yeah. You lost, uh, and Nick lost my play. I don't know what you're talking about. He's made this whole thing up. <laughs> no, like Nick lost my play button. So those of you who have been along on this entire journey of Nick losing my play button, you know, you know, if we start poking and jabbing about play button, it's, it's something fun to talk about. We might talk about Star Wars or pineapple on pizza or M&Ms. You know, there's a lot of things that you can talk about to really <laughs> the original spinner. Yep, a that's, lot the, that's the spinner that I was talking about, Kelly Copter. Yeah. Right here. So, yeah, so we would we would do stuff on here like this one's another spin. One tip you lose one tip you lose tuber tools giveaway. Tube buddy upgrade. You see how he just came in and blocked me on the tube the play spanner button comment. Uh, one month of tube spanner. We got another spin. Yep. Yeah, he's doing the play button story. So what you guys don't know is he actually got the play button when he first got back to Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you don't know. No, I did not. <laughs> you're, you're telling pork pies now. You're telling pork pies. Right. But anyway, they're going to pick up on things that interest you. Uh, and, and it's just fun things to talk about, right? Yeah. You can add emojis. You can add the little custom emojis there so people can actually put those things into the chat. Uh, you know, the more personal you can make your chat, the more involved you can get uh, the audience. It just makes it a, a, a more entertaining experience for everybody. I think it's fun. Yeah. Normally, I stream in my pajamas. Um, so, like, if, when you see a stream at home, like when I'm at home, I'm in, I'm in pajamas usually, uh, mm. usually at home. So, uh, it's D bankroll is our uh is our next question here and that's like seriously the name um it says uh let's hear finance content the goal of the channel is to educate people on finances on a low income and the question is do you think showing your face is necessary to grow your channel no mm. um but i Not do think that it's helpful in terms of you know making that human to human connection because and, and this is going to get increasingly more important as youtube gets Dude, flooded more and with more AI with ai content. content yes so i i think that we're in for like a rough like ride. a yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know if it's a rough ride, but I think we're in for like a really interesting time coming up um, because you know like as AI like um, I follow the AI video subreddit um, and I'm seeing like so much of that getting so good so fast yeah. And in addition to that, we have all these different AI tools where you can have like AI presenters and things like that. Right now, with the way that you know it currently is, you can still see that like, okay, that's clearly not like a real person, right? But like, we're just at, you know, like give it six more months or like worst case scenario a year. And it's, it's probably it's gonna be pretty indistinguishable from a real person. And especially if you take the technology like Descript has, where you can just put your voice into it and it'll synthesize your own voice. As soon as the tech is there for, for that to happen with um, people, and I'm sure it's already there, you know, I'm sure there's either somebody working on it or it's yeah. already out. Um, it's probably just, you know, at the, at the rudimentary version right now. But as soon as you're going to be able to do that with yourself, then in that particular case, people are just going to flood everything with, yeah. um, with content. So because of that, I think the competitive nature of what it is that, that we are all facing. Faceless channels are going to be bombed bombarded. Yeah, with, but uh, but with I think also just with with AI people also. Sure. Yeah, like I think all of that sure. is, is is yeah. I, th I think it's going to be a really interesting time that we're that we're walking the, into with that. The only thing we're going to have for a while, and it, this might get taken away too, but the thing that we're going to have for a while over AI as people, because they're you know AI people are, are, are there as well and they're getting better, 
is that human interaction. AI is like still, live streaming and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's just humans. I mean, it's I mean, not that they can't do it. Right. And that's just scary to even talk about. Yeah. It's 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 frightening to think about. They're working towards AIs. You already have like VTubers and stuff. Right. That's is, what I mean. Yeah. Like as soon as you put a human skin on that, that looks real. Yeah. It's just capturing that that human element, especially during live stream. So I, I think that's one thing where putting your face on camera is going to work to your benefit. Right. Leveraging that human interaction. I think it's going to be a while before AI is going to be able to, to touch on that. But faceless channels, man, you're. I don't want to say your days are numbered, but you're going to have massive amounts of yeah. The amount it's of competition that you're yeah. The amount it's of competition that you're that you're that you're going to be facing is going to be just a yeah yeah astronaut. huge. You're going to need to, you're going to need to up your game and find a way to stand out yeah. because especially think about this. I mean, we were just talking today. He was showing me a video of someone that's using complete automation to do absolutely everything with their video. Yeah, and when you can have AI making the videos, uploading the videos, publishing, like when every, I mean, that's going to run around the clock. Right. So you're going to see like videos just being pumped out around the clock on the same channel. Like yeah. that's going to be crazy. Across multiple channels. Yeah. yeah. Like it'll be entire networks. I'm, yeah. I'm yeah. Like it's, yeah, it's going to be crazy. I'm curious to see if at some point YouTube steps up and says, okay, this is getting out of hand. AI content can't be monetized within a certain like these types of. I mean, they're already doing but it with the, but some But the problem is going to be is, is when it becomes undetectable. Prove it. Yeah. Right. Because right now it's like, oh, that voice sounds like a little bit weird. So that's right. probably AI. Yeah. And like maybe, you know, this, you know, video. Yeah, it's not that great, you know, whatever. Um, but like, you know, a year from now, two years from now, five years from now is a worst case scenario. It, it'll probably be indistinguishable. To where, uh, to where it's going to be really difficult for even a reviewer to be like, okay, yeah, that's definitely a, uh, yeah. you know. Well, that's, then it's going to get tricky, yeah. right? And then we might have to go through some additional process to actually get into the partner program. Yeah. Or to maintain the partner program, right. you're going to have to prove that you're a human. Yeah, I don't know. But even I'm, still, I'm, yeah, yes, I'm a human. Yeah. Right? I'm negative. I'm a meat popsicle. Right. I'm, right. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a human, but this is my, right. my AI yeah, it, avatar. It's, exactly. That is also me. It's going yeah. to be yeah, wild. Be crazy. Is what I'm trying yeah. to say. It's going to be wild. I have no idea what's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, I, I, all I know is it's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. How, I just I just know that it's going to happen, and I know that it, a lot of people are going to get steamrolled. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, yeah, especially like I, you know, if you if you have a channel where you're not, um, you know, where you don't have that personality element, um, then I, I think that that's you know definitely going to be uh, it's going to be challenging um, in the future. I do, I, and I, I have another prediction. We're, okay, think about the cycles in music, mm -hmm. right? Like, remember, we all had, like, rock. Those mm -hmm. of you who were around, like, in the 80s and the 90s, you had, like, you know, metal, you know, the hair band music and rock and guitar solos, and that mm -hmm. really kind of went away for a while. Yeah. And right now, or the past few years, we're starting to see a resurgence in that. Now we're getting new albums from Extreme and Winger and all these, you know, Metallica's back on. Like, all these bands are coming back, and they're touring again. So, like, that whole th I think... We'll hit a point at some time, unless AI, AI gets so good that we can't tell, where, and this is a prediction, you know, we can we can get back 10 years from now. Ten, let's regroup 10 years from now. All right. Get right here. Uh. This channel. <laughs> but I think we might hit a point to where people are going to be like, you know what, I really miss people. Hey, I Siri, <laughs> set a reminder for 10 years right? from right now. Yeah. I just think people might be like, you know what, AI is a... On, uh, on Nim and Live. AI is amazing, but I really miss, you know, not, I really miss hiding out. Like, I don't want to hide out under bridges anymore from the machines. Right. I really miss right. humans. Where's John Connor? That's what but, I'm trying yeah, to say. I, I We're going to miss John Connor. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think also, like, okay, imagine this, right? Like, um, okay, so imagine, like, if you can have AI make the video. Yeah. And then you have the automation system in place through Zapier and everything to where right. you have, you know, the, the video being um, constructed and then put through that system. Maybe, you know, you have a person monitoring every to make sure everything's going out and all of that. But then you also have AI tools that are reading your analytics right. and that are looking for, you know, places to optimize future videos. Right. And it's doing all of this stuff rapidly and at scale with every video that you publish. So then every video is just increasingly getting better and better and better and better. Exponentially better videos. Right. Then what? Then what ends up happening there is it ends up becoming a place where it maintains attention, which at the end of the day, that's what they're there for. They're there. Listen, they're a company. Listen, future self, because I know this is broadcasting out to the out to space right now. <laughs> if you're watching this, if you're watching this and you're receiving this message, uh, you are space. you are the resistance. <laughs> Do you hear me? I'm not joking. If you're watching this right now, wherever you're at in the universe, 
this you are the great. resistance. Oh, so good. Just calling it for what it is, man. That would have been fine. I should have just ended the stream there. Yeah. To where it's like, oh no, no, what happened? Yeah. Yeah. But uh, uh, but yeah, I, I think we're I think we're in for a very interesting um interesting time yeah, to say and, the least. And you know, I see, we talk about this all the time. Yeah. And you know, I we spend wanna... a lot of time talking about the the AI stuff right now. Yeah, we do. And I see people saying like, oh, you know, AI is not going to do this. AI, AI, we're just getting like literally just we just been into, yeah, we're just dipping our toes into it, and they're already making images now, portraits of people that are almost. You, you can barely like you can view like blow up some of these pictures and you can't tell anymore right like that's terrifying yeah so where is this going to be in like three more years yep so we have here um how do i submit a video clip to get ai to generate a gaming video so right now if you have a video um you can go to a website called kaiser and you can upload again it's still like in, in its infancy here but you can go to a website called kaiser you can upload that video into kaiser and then it'll make their own version of that video basically reskins it in like any format or in, not any format but like any style that you want it reskins the video that you've already that you've already made um so in that particular case that's one option um the next thing the next uh or one of the additional threats because there's a ton of them um but is runway gen 2. with runway gen 2 that is getting so good um that that people are making like you know short films and things like that already we were looking at one today yeah. where you know they have like this egyptian pharaoh and basically cool. he throws this party at the pyramids and cool. the whole thing starts and you know like it's showing like close-ups of his face and it looks like pretty real already um but play things where it falls apart is like you know they're driving through the desert so all this weird stuff is happening with the car and the people in the car when they're in the party scene then you know everything's looking like really weird and all that because it's still you know learning how to do it but um but like with that already all that was made from people typing in what they want that particular scene yeah. to look like and then they edit it all together um, after they have all the different clips so um in the case with the gaming video um you'd need to play right now you would need to play it and then you you know you could get it up there but that will probably also be able to be automated um sometime in the future as well i would guess in terms of you know ai is actually playing some of the games and stuff like that especially on a computer um to where you'll probably be able to get some type of plug-in or something like that to be able to play the game also to where you can just like watch it play or something crazy like that so you yeah know, it's it's, it's it's it's, it's going to be interesting. I mean, who knows how it's going to go, but it'll be interesting. For reference, those of you who have been, you know, playing with Mid Journey, you know what I'm talking about, or, or some of their competitors. You know, three or four months ago, the the image generating AI systems were they were having difficulty with things like hands, fingers, teeth, things like that. Fast forward, you know, three months, now they're perfect in, I, in almost every image. Uh, especially, I mean, they still mess up here and there. But they're almost perfect in a lot of the images now in just a very short amount of time. So now what we're seeing in video AI is video AI is struggling with the same things that photo AI yeah. was struggling with six months ago. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's learning exponentially on this. So it's like six, six more months from now, we're going to have some incredible AI video. Like yes. That. Incredible. And I see somebody saying, like, oh, I'm feeling bummed. Let don't feel, yeah, don't, don't feel, feel bummed. bummed. Like, who knows how it's going to go? Who knows how it's going to go? But number too is like it's just is, a threat that is um that is looming but we don't know how it's actually going to work but out. also think about how you can harness it to your advantage yep. you know you can use ai created imagery and videos for b-roll you can use it for backgrounds you can use it for thumbnails right you can use ai to your advantage and i know there's stuff coming out for for data and stuff like that where ai can help you identify certain things within your data uh, so yeah, use it to your advantage and, and man, just keep making content. I'm, I'm trying to find a quote here. Um, D, hold on, give me one super second. D, um, while you're doing that, Demon Dro uh, gave us a super chat. Thank you so much for $10. He says, tell us about Thailand and passport bros. Th Thailand is really cool. Uh, it's hot. <laughs> yeah, It's hot, but the, the, the fun thing about Thailand is it's a really relaxed society uh, and generally safe. Like it, some cities are different than others, but our particular city, no no exaggeration like i can put my my bag my phone my computer on a table in a restaurant or a cafe and i can i can go get a massage for an hour and come back and it's still going to be there like it's incredibly it safe. is um the roads are dangerous and, to and drive really chill. on but it's just a super chill country really laid back people it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a it's a cool place so listen to this yeah this is from youtube's ceo okay, okay? this is from youtube ceo on the on the ai thing um, he says um, that, that YouTube is investing in the moment 
And he says, Google AI is accelerating creativity and the possibilities for creation will extend beyond anything we can imagine today. Yeah, who was that that quoted that? Neil Moen, YouTube CEO. Okay, so I think it was the Google CEO, the Google or Microsoft, somebody just two or three weeks ago said that AI is going to be to humanity, I forget what the exact uh, quote was, but something like AI is going to be this, uh, have the same influence as, what was it, fire? Yeah, was, it was fire yeah, and electricity. electricity. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to, what do you say? It's going to be, it's going to be as profound as fire and electricity to humanity. Yeah. That's, that's incredible. Yeah, so get ready for that. Yeah. Roberto says, uh, I've been thinking of going to Thailand and becoming the third Nimmin bro. Get over here, dude. Yep, yeah, get man. over here. So, so know, I'm coming over there to Vid Summit um, in, uh, uh, at the end of September and then, of course, going to Vid Summit and then coming back. If you want to roll back with me, let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah, it's a different way of life, man. Yeah. It's, it's a just, just, you know, come over for vacation, see, you know, see, what, you, see what you think. Completely different uh, way of life. Yeah. And here's the weird thing, and I don't want to harp on this, but here's the weird thing. Living here for so long and doing things a different way and, and living things more along the lines how, how they live on this side of the world mm – -hmm. When I go back to like the United States now, I feel like a foreigner. Visiting. Same here. I, I feel Same like I'm here. visiting a foreign country. I do too. Like no no shade at all towards the, yeah. the Americans. It's just, there. We've been over here for a long time. We, so yeah, we've, we've just been over here for so long. It. When yeah. we go back, it's what's normal. You people yeah. are weird. That's yeah. what I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, oh, I feel you. like a foreigner visiting a, a, yeah. a weird foreign. Like I have culture yeah. shock going back to the U.S. now. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, it's like interactions are different. Like yeah. everything is just like, like a yeah, totally different thing. You guys thing. are like praise, uh, you know, putting this priority. It's, it's just yeah. it's completely different than how we live over here. Yeah. Um, so let's see here. So the next question uh, that we have here is from Rock Lake Meditations by Scott. Um, they say they do mindfulness and meditation content. The goal is to help people with stress and anxiety to get uh, monetized. To get monetized? Uh, maybe motivated or something like that. Um, oh, never mind. A and to get the channel monetized. Got it. I was connecting that to the people and I was like, huh? But I, I got it now. So the question is, um, how do channels with pre-recorded materials, a live stream, um, play pre-recorded materials, a live stream? Um, could you roll a pre-recorded video and watch live and respond live in the chat while people are on? So you can, you can publish a video as a premiere. And when you publish that video as a premiere, you get the live streaming functionality of chat. Um, you can also get super chats, you know, things like that. But you can, you know, communicate with people right there in the chat while it's playing as a premiere. So you can do it that way. Um, you can also do uh, recorded videos live through like StreamYard, for example. They have that as one of their features where you basically, you, you know, start the stream and you just hit play. And then it records the, or then it plays the video and then you can sit there and, you know, talk to everybody in the chat and all that, you know, for, to support any of the information that's going on or whatever. Um, let's see here. Good question. Um, we're on number 45 already so we've gotten through a bunch of them today um teacher oh. rod tech <laughs> what uh uh demon row i just looked that up no no that's okay i didn't realize i just had to look that up for for what i'm not gonna repeat it i didn't know what it was oh, he, he asked okay. a question i had to i had to look up what it was oh okay no 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 that's uh <laughs> no Oh, yeah. So so for the passport that bro part, here. that happens here a lot. But no, for yeah. the passport bro part, I yeah. know what you're talking about. I actually have very strong opinions about that, but it's not something that I um, not something I'm going to talk about, you know, yeah. uh, here because we're here, to, you know, we're here about YouTube. Um, uh, but yeah, that whole up. thing is uh, it is definitely. Uh, yeah. So uh, let's hear uh, teacher Rod Tech. Um, they do tutorial content. The goal of the channel is primary. I'm going to tell you a funny story about that, too. Uh, okay. D. Oh, yeah, we're definitely seeing a lot of people here. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 a lot yeah. of people are moving over here. Like, basically, um, when when people learn how to work remotely, yeah, then the path there is like, okay, I've learned to work remotely. Wait a minute. I don't have to stay where I'm at. I can go yeah. anywhere if I can work remotely. And then people will just start traveling around. They'll end up here. They'll end up in Indonesia. They'll end up in South America. They'll end so, up all over the place, not just here. Yeah, so I've, I, I've been over here from the days of dial-up just for reference. Yep. So it's been really interesting watching as technology evolves, as internet speeds get better, as people start to learn about remote work and are able to re work remotely. Yeah, uh, remote work's like mainstream now. Right, yeah. right, right. It didn't yeah. used to be. So it's been really interesting to like, oh, wow, so, uh, this is the first ever workspace that some, you know, somebody made where people can go in and work and they've got you know slightly faster internet. Now, like, you know, co-working places are oh, yeah. everywhere mm -hmm. and it's the normal. It's it's the norm. It's it's been a really interesting thing to witness. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so many people are traveling all over, mm -hmm. working everywhere. Yeah. Bali, Thailand, Philippines, all over Latin America. It's crazy, crazy. D 
Teacher Rod Tech. Um, they do tutorials. The goal of the channel is primarily for my students reference and hobby. Um, the question is, good day, I'm from the Philippines and my videos um, are in the local language. Should I use Filipino for my titles and thumbnails? Uh, Tagalog, yes, absolutely, without question. Um, if you are speaking in your native language, then I would use um, your native language in your thumbnails and titles. Um, you know, one of the things to remember is that your thumbnails and titles create an expectation for people going into the video. And if you have them in English and people, even though a lot of Filipinos, you know, speak English, um, if you, if they click on them and they're a native English speaker, but they don't, you know, speak your local language, then in that particular case, they're going to come in, they're going to experience you speaking in a language they don't understand. They're either going to read the, um, the, the captions, which most won't, um, and then, you know, uh, but if they do, they could, you know, read your captions, but most likely they're going to bounce and go watch somebody that's telling them the same thing in their native language, um, since you're on tutorial content. Um, uh, so because of that, you definitely want to make sure that uh, your your packaging for your thumbnails and titles meets um, the same language that you speak inside the videos. Now, keep in mind, you can translate all that. You can add captions, all of those types of things. Um, so, you know, maybe making some of those things available, but from the outside in order to increase the right people clicking on your thumbnails, then in that case, I would definitely um, I would definitely do it in your in your native language. Yeah, Roberto says digital nomad movement will only grow in AI tools will accelerate. It. Totally, dude, hundred percent, man. Yeah. It's it's crazy too because the, the funny thing is, is AI is going to put a lot of the digital nomads out of business too. Yeah, we yeah with some friends yeah. here, some friends yeah. here who are working online are. Yeah really concerned about uh, uh, what's happening yeah. but it's been interesting watching too like you, before you could go into like a cafe and like maybe one person's on a computer yeah now you go into a cafe yeah. and it's just loaded with people sitting on computers mm -hmm. working and it's cool because the locals are doing it now too yeah right locals are like yeah i can work online you know and i can sell products or do whatever yeah you know sell digital products everybody's on it mm -hmm. it's fantastic Southwest Barrels is our next question. They've been on YouTube for a year or more. They do sport uh, videos on barrel racing. The goal of the channel says I upload mostly live streams to help barrel racers. And the question is, how can you tell if your live streams count towards your watch hours? As long as you leave them public, they will count towards your uh, they'll count towards your watch areas or your watch hours. Patia ASMR uh, walking says probably should mention the permits and legal side of being a digital nomad in another country. Absolutely. Yeah, so to be clear, huge conversation. Yeah, huge conversation. But to be clear, you know, you do need permits to actually work, you know, in other countries and things like that. Um, so, you so, know, you do have to be, you know, you do have to be careful there. Yeah. So real quick, uh, just in, in case you're yeah. coming to Thailand. Thanks for mentioning that. Yeah. yeah. Well, anywhere in the world, if you think about being a digital nomad, there are visa, pro visa things you got to deal with. Th yeah. There's all kinds of paperwork yeah. and documentation you got to have. But I will say this. Some places will say, um, you, you know, if you're going to do a brick and mortar business, you need a uh, you need a special work permit. And, but they'll say digital nomads because you're not paying taxes here. We don't care. You can come. So you need to check with anywhere you're traveling in the world to see how yeah. they actually handle digital nomads. Some people yeah. want work permits. Some people don't care. And that can change city to city. Yeah. Within a country as well. Yeah. It, it's, it can be really tricky. Yeah, they say that uh, that that they're in Thailand and they found that out the hard way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah I know this. I know the city that you're in. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we live there for we live there for a while. Yeah, yeah. just as a heads up, <laughs> if, if Patty is the main place you've been, Patty is probably the most mercenary place. Yeah. Uh, in terms of law enforcement yeah. and immigration. Yeah. Yeah. It's so pretty um, relaxed up north. Yeah. Yeah. It's really chill up up here in Chiang Mai. Yeah. So um, Mr. Odd and End is the uh, next question here. Um, I love that name. They do pet content. The goal of the channel is to get monetized and be able to help more animals in need, um, abandoned dogs and cats in needs. Um, the question is, how can I get people to watch my long videos? Like they're my short form videos. In this past week, the main um, dog of my channel passed away. I'm oh, so sorry to hear that. Um, says, I was wondering what's the best way to keep her in the videos and bring in my other two dogs. So, um, of course, you know, just a little clip here and there, you know, the other dog, you know, to pay homage. And then for the um, um, getting people to watch your longer videos, this is going to come down to just experience, right? Like um, you just have to pay attention to how people are currently responding to your videos using your audience retention reports. And then from there, just looking for places le that people leave the videos, looking for places that people consistently watch. When you find people are leaving, that means that, you know, there's something about the video happening there to where it's just not holding them enough and because of that they're abandoning the video if you find the straight lines or the almost straight lines where people are just having a very slow gradual drop off then in that particular case you want to do more of what's making that happen because that means that people are engaged in those particular parts of your video so you want to look for those things you also want to look for like spikes to where if it's you know somebody comes into your video and they end up skipping a lot of the content and going straight to like a part of the video you want to look for those types of things and also look for um, those spikes because those 
those can also be shareable moments. So like, for example, if um, you make a video about, you know, like um, your, your recent dog, for example, that passed, then in that case, if it, if, you know, like a certain part of that video resonated with people and they shared it out to their friends on Facebook, but they happened to grab the timestamp when they did it, then in that case, you know, that can cause a spike at the entry point of the video. So you want to just look for, you know, those types of things and just kind of take note when those are happening, but basically just learning how people are responding to your videos and then modifying as you need, as, as need be. Great question though. Next. Next. So we have uh, Isaiah Coolman. Super glad you're here, Isaiah. Yep. Says they do public interviews. The goal is to make people laugh and have something um, they can relate to. The question is, what's your advice um, for a public interview channel? Oh, do great man. interviews. Make sure that you're, um, the interviews that you're doing since you're trying to make people laugh, try to be funny, um, you know, try to you know, be snappy. I would talk about things since you're doing public interviews, talk about things that are you know, popular in the world right now, things that are trending. Um, and by doing that, you know, it's, you're, when you publish that content, it's gonna be accessible for a lot more people. Because if, if you're talking about you know, things that are trending in public, then in that particular case, you know, people that are wanting to, you know, or people that are into those types of videos, um, they're gonna, you know, they're, they're, you know, they'll, they'll enjoy the content. Um, you know, for example, there's you know, some channels that I watch where they go out um, and they uh, interview people. And I absolutely, like there, there's one in particular that I actually search out um, just because I, you know, I enjoy their content so much. And I, and I don't do that for a lot of, um, you know, content creators, but I actually seek them out hoping that they have something new. <laughs> so, uh, so, you know, as long as you are talking about, you know, things that, uh, you know, a certain, you know, audience is uh, interested in um, and it's something that's trending, then in that particular case, it gives you a lot of potential. Um, on the audience side, also within those conversations, think about that at scale. So for example, like if, um, like if you're out talking about politics, for example, then like always talk about politics. So then that yeah. way you're connecting with people that are into politics. If you're always talking about like, you know, getting people's opinions on YouTubers or movies or something like that, um, then in that case, always talking about those things so that you're talking to people that are interested in those topics consistently so that they can not only come in and watch that one video, but they can go and watch a bunch of videos on your, on your channel as well. Um, so those are the types of things that you want to think about there. And on that note, is it time? The clock Here the we wall? are. Here we are. Yeah. Old clock on the wall says it's time. Yep. So on that note, thank you everybody so much for hanging out today. D, another uh, another great stream here. Yeah. So everybody thank have you. a awesome rest of your weekend. Keep in mind if you are somebody that is you know just getting started on YouTube, just remember that um, you know there's a lot of things that you need to learn and all of that is part of the journey, just like anything else that you do. So if you're you know going along and you're thinking like man this is overwhelming or man there's a lot of stuff I can learn or you know anything like that, just keep in mind just you know all you got to do is just keep putting one foot in front of the other, keep working on each thing, keep trying to understand just a little bit more each time you publish and you look at, you know, the results of your videos. Um, and then you just keep going through that process over and over again while developing your skills and you'll get there. Yeah. So I, can I add some, some totally reference, like without question, everyone in the audience right now, if you're thinking like, man, this is just like so much to learn and so much to do. We both had to go through that. Roberto Blake in here yep. has had to do that. Paul Peck yep. drywall. Like everyone who is succeeding on YouTube and has built a career out of YouTube, like we've all been in the exact same place that you're at right now. Mm -hmm. So what what uh, Nick just said is is spot on. Yeah, it's it's a learning process. Yep. So um so again, thank you so much for hanging out. Um and we will see you next time. Oh, and I've got a bunch of links to stuff that'll help you out down in the description as well. So make sure that you check those out, and uh, we will see you next time.